Hello. Hi. Welcome to the Alt Shift X and Glidus show. Today we're going to play a game, and I'm excited. I'm so excited. Are you excited, Glidus? I just said I was. I'm more excited than you are. I, I can tell. <laughs> because we are playing Pictionary, but not your not your mum's Pictionary, not your old man's Pictionary. This is a Song of Ice and Fire Pictionary, where we're going to draw theories from from Asswife from a Song of Ice and Fire. But not just any theories. Not just not, any not theories. Not your granddad's <laughs> Bruce Bolton is a vampire. Not your great grand uncles. Vanilla Moon theories. <laughs> vanilla theories are not enough for us. Anymore. We need the harder shit. We've graduated yeah. to to the more the tastier theories. So we are using the official Alt Swift X totally accurate Song of Ice and Fire theory generator. Trademark, which copyright, registered. Ge it generates such theories as Craster will marry Podrick, Nimble Dick Crab, Sir Pounce, and Cersei are the three heads of the dragon. Mira is a Targaryen. That's an actual theory. Yeah. Well, isn't Mira meant to be Jon Jon Snow's twin. I yeah. like that one. Ertak Altanos did a fan art of that theory. That sounds great. Yeah. His um, art's wonderful. Osha will die in the ball. Again, perfectly plausible. Marcel is secretly a Targaryen. I have legitimately believed that at certain points in my life. <laughs> so there's a wonderful variety of of wonderful, a whole, wonderful. That's just true. Hey, a patch face is the Bloodstone Emperor reborn. Come on. So, so those are the sort. That's the pool of theories that we're drawing from here. That we are going to draw for each other, and you can all try and guess what it is that we're drawing. And, and I think it's going to be fun. Let's just get right into it, shall we? So I'm going to start drawing. A theory from this generator and I'm not going to show anyone what this theory is um, I'm just gonna start drawing and you can see on screen what I'm drawing and it's gonna be a masterpiece and we're gonna try and do it as quickly as possible that was Clegane Ball wasn't it so I'm off screen it, the, Clegane Ball, that was very quick <laughs> um, uh, oh goodness um, all <laughs> right I almost want to write this down because it's quite long. Uh. Yeah, we did a few practice rounds just to make okay. sure that the idea was feasible, but All right. some of them are quite verbose. <laughs> All right, I think, I, think, I think I'm ready. Are you ready to guess? Yeah, let's go. I'm going to start drawing now. All We've right. got a timer. Everyone, let's see if you can guess what theory I'm drawing. It's a race against me. It sure is. Right, that's an oblong. All right. Um... That's an oblong with a mushroom growing off it. <laughs> That's so awful. It's great. Don't doubt yourself. Back yourself in, mate. Oh, thanks, Gladys. So that's someone holding their hand up rather victoriously, it would appear. Your, your, your people look so much more people-like than me, than, than mine. Not me. I look more like a person than what you've just drawn here. I like to think you look like a person. <laughs> um, so we've got someone... Is this flaming? No? Oh, it's a it's a flaming sword. A, flaming swords come up a lot in the A Song of Ice and Fire random theory generator. Yeah, they sure do. I mean, I mean, when I made the theory generator, I, I might have been on a bit of a <laughs> Azora High kick. So this is a one-eyed person. Is the long face a, um, a, a feature of this person, or is it just yeah, incidental I, I, to Yeah, I would say a it? long face is a feature okay. of this person. A one-eyed, long-faced person with a burning sword. And their face is spelling O X U. <laughs> Not my intention. It's effective, and we've got another. Per oh, he's, look how happy! <laughs> yeah, well, he, the happiness might have been wrong, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> look how gormless. Is that more accurate? <laughs> um, we've got pointy teeth. Is this biter? It looks like hey. bite. That's how I would think of biter. <laughs> He's a bitey boy, he is. He sure is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, mm. There's a lot of elements to this okay, one. Okay, so, so you we've need got to an Azora attention. High sort of person, a biter sort of person, and I believe he's drawing uh, Uluru floating in the ocean. Oh, honestly, if you guess this, I'm going to be so impressed. Um... Uh, so that's a, a bathtub with two people <laughs> looking in. <laughs> 
All right, we've got three faces <laughs> overlooking a, a piece of land in the ocean. I'm not going to lie, there's a lot oh, of... Oh, like... Isle of Faces, okay. So, um, Biter, Isle of Faces, and what are we looking at here? There's another sword involved? No, that's not a sword, that's a, a scythe. Is this a Harlaw? A one-eyed Harlaw, that doesn't scan for me. Um, it's a sacrifice on the Isle of Faces. Someone sacrificing Biter on the Isle of Faces, right? And who is this person? Um, it, it could be Blood Raven, I suppose. A one-eyed... No. Um, oh, is it Beric Dondarrion? Beric Dondarrion will sacrifice yes. Biter on the Isle of Faces. You are so close. There's just one more element. Okay. There's one more element. <laughs> with, a, with a big scythe. <laughs> is that the element? Ugh. It's not a scythe. Oh, an arak. Alright, but there's one slight additional piece of information. Oh, we've got to make some caveats. Oh, it's... I don't really understand what this is signifying, <laughs> to be honest. We're so close. Beric Dondarrion killing Biter on the Isle of Faces. Oh, oh, to Nisa Nisa him! Because they're in love with each other, no? Oh, this is very Or bad. is it to summon forth Cthulhu? Under the red comet. Oh, there's mm. a dragon involved. What is this? What is the property of this Arak? Uh. Oh bloody hell! What? 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 Oh, it's a Valyrian steel Arak. Put it together. Uh. <laughs> oh, what's the name of that fucking? What? What? No, it's correct. You know that. That is it. That is it. <laughs> that is it. So the full sentence, the full theory... B- Beric Dondarrion yes. will sacrifice Biter on the Isle of Faces yes. with a Valyrian steel arrow. Yes! That is so fucking convoluted. <laughs> you killed it. You got it. <laughs> oh my god. And that is the theory. <laughs> Beric will kill Biter with a Valyrian steel arrow at the Isle of Faces. He got it in four minutes. That's incredible. Wow. Well done. I wonder if anyone in the chat got it before us. I, I Honestly, wasn't looking that's so the... specific and verbose that I doubt it. Yeah, no, that, my God, good work. Oh, that really takes it out of you. That, I think that's a point for us. Would you like me to draw another one? That's my point. <laughs> get your own I point. I think we both get a point. Yeah, I'm no, quite that was proud a, of very my, well drawn. my artistic masterpiece here. I'm quite, quite happy with this. All right, are you ready for another one? Chat. Yes. Is the chat ready for another one? Everyone is very impressed in the live <laughs> chat that you got that, Kaleidos. <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, so same procedure. I'm going to open up a new document. Yep. And I'm going to generate a new random theory, and I'm not going to tell anyone uh, what it is. And I'm ready now so okay. i'm gonna start drawing so you got that one in four minutes the next one is starting in ready set go all right it's um the inky void that stares at you when you're contemplating yourself is that what yours looks like <laughs> <laughs> mine looks more like the splash screen of blues clues so i'm starting with a green color i i see that it's good to know i'm not colorblind um, what sort of figure am I looking at here? Oh, it's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it's a mangy sort of dog. Is this the Osgrey sigil? Not quite. No. Um, we're gonna get white, and we're gonna. All right. So we've got a a, a person here. That was always helpful. Um, often not actually. Oh, okay. A bearded folk. Rather heavy set. I really thought this would be so much easier than the previous one. Standing on some sort of... uh, well, No longer standing on anything. It's got a massive hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to... Are do- these battlements? Settle some geography here. I see. Right, three, t- three castles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Is it the... Oh, God. How embarrassing. The Um, the peaks. Observe this shiny bald head. Shiny bald head. um. And observe this 
A sword. Oh, he's got a sword now. Uh, and observe. Oh. Observe this companion. This what? What the fuck is going on? Observe this animal companion on the shoulder. Oh, it's a bearded. It, it it's a it's a it's a parrot sort of thing, isn't it? Oh no! I, it's J O Mormont. <laughs> yes. Fucking hell. <laughs> Yes, it is J.O. Mormont. Oh, sorry, you were drawing three castles, and I was like, the peaks? Because of their three castles. Yeah, that was that was confusing. I was trying to just draw, like, the wall and the three major yeah, no. castles on the wall. Well, you got to keep drawing, mate. Well, I... W- <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um... All right. Corn! Now, here's the second part of this situation. He loses an eye. Oh, no. Oh, he dies! Everyone knows that losing an eye is just halfway to death. Because if you get another X over your face, you're dead. That's how it works. Oh, we've got another fire. The fire comes up so often in these. Right. It's almost like it's a, a song of ice and fire. I guess fire is a part of that. Right. So we've got a burning heart. That that makes me think of Stannis. Is Stannis sacrificing Gior Mormont to R'hllor? Oh, is he reviving him? Is yeah. oh, oh, oh Geo Mormont is a fire white or will become a fire white. Pretty much. Pretty much. And and th- making someone into a white, what's another word for that? Resurrect. Yeah. So <laughs> Relaw The Red God will resurrect Geo Mormont. Yes! Okay. That is it. Geo Mormont will be resurrected by Relaw in three minutes and thirty seconds. That oh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> If that's going to happen in three and a half minutes, oh, oh shit. we need to clear out. <laughs> the winds of winter already? Yeah. You got it. Actually, that'd be a crazy plot point. That would Jay be Hon pretty Mormont cool. Mormont comes back? I mean, I mean, his corpse must still be at Craster's Keep. So maybe, like, white... No, here's a theory. Jill Mormont comes south with the army of the dead to attack the wall. But then John, through some kind of his resurrection by the power of R'hllor, John gives his R'hllor kiss of life life force to Gior in the same way that Beric revives Lady Stoneheart. John will revive Gior the same way that, that Stoneheart, the Beric. Yeah, it's like yeah. poetry, it rhymes. It's like poetry, it rhymes. Yeah. Just doing the same thing again is the same as a plot development, yeah, right? Yeah, it's the same as a theme. All right, would you like to draw the next one? Oh, we'd, we'd best shirk the responsibilities off to one another. All right, one moment. Give us a Give us a little bit. All right. All right, we're doing it live. Um, we're ready we for another live. drawing. That's what makes it so much fun. Glidus is going to draw a beautiful piece of artwork f- for me to guess. Um, and I'm going to guess what randomly generated theory he's trying to depict. Uh, I need to not show the audience what we're looking at. You probably also want to um, zoom in the Photoshop window a little bit so that they can see our beautiful artwork. I'll do what I want, mate. Gladys, I want the people to appreciate our <laughs> art. I don't want pe- anyone to appreciate this. There's nothing to appreciate in what I'm about to do. These are going to be hung on walls in the Louvre. The Louvre. The Louvre. <laughs> um, people, people are going to study oh. our, our use of um, colour and composition. Oh. I accidentally showed the audience what I was going to do, so I'm going to not do that one and find another one. All right. Sorry, everyone. Um, well, I'm I'm just like mentally walking through my mind okay. palace to remind myself of every possible theory that could come out of the Alt Shift X random All theory right. generator, th- which is linked in the video description if you want to play around ah, with it. Look at you and your vertical integration. <laughs> that look. All the, all of the buckets of money that I'm going to make by advertising okay, this free theory generator. All right. And let's go. All so, right. I'm excited. So I need to draw someone who's just... So that's Gregor Clegane the Mountain. I mean, who else is... Or is it Hodor? No, no, you're on the right track. Oh, so that's Robert Strong, the resurrected mountain. Tick. Uh... <laughs> we probably should tick rather than give each other verbal hints, maybe. It's probably um, more... All right, what is Robert Strong going to do? Um, it's more about the nature of his being... 
Okay. Well, all right. Gregor Clegane is King Tommen. King Tommen was used to make Gregor Clegane. Oh, oh uh, is that not a crown? Is that a head? It is a crown, but it's it's not Lannister, as you were thinking. Is it um, King... Oh, King Rob's head is on Gregor Clegane's body. Nah. Uh, Mance Stop Raider. Stop thinking of actual theories. Stannis Baratheon. Yeah, that's true. I've, I've got to, like, go against my instincts. Um. Oh, my God. Is that the Shrouded Lord? Where is your image of the... You've, you've looked at too much art, man. It looks so ethereal. Oh, the Night King. Is it... Is it Blood Raven? It's... It, that person is ooky spooky. I know that. Thank you. It's an ooky spooky person. It's very evocative, Gladys. <laughs> <laughs> the Mountain Robert Strong is Night's King. Bloodstone Emperor. Uh, yeah, yeah, completely. Garth yeah, Greenhand. You, you completely are. Um, Who's like the weirdest spooky? Oh, cold hands. No, 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 no. <laughs> What? What am I looking um, at? Cra uh, oh, I know what I need to draw. Hang it's on, Cresta. Hang on. Uh, how, how how the fuck do I draw this? Who's the Who's an ooky spooky? Uh <laughs> it's 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 Tywin Lannister after a few drinks. Um, it's George R. R. Martin. Fucking it, it's uh, all right. Is that a is that a Bed, lightning, fire. No, stop thinking of things. <laughs> <laughs> I've got uh, one job, I... <laughs> Gliders. It's to think of things. Hang on, I know. What uh, to that's do. a sword. Oh, it's Hosta Tully. What? <laughs> it's Hosta Tully <laughs> on his Viking funeral. He's he's lying in the river on the boat. What is on this with guy's the head? Sword. Mate? It's a crown. It's King Hosta Tully. <laughs> Oh god, I've really screwed the pooch now. It's uh, the swords. The two swords are interesting. Well, Who be, has it's two swords? More than two. Just Is get, it Sirio? So couldn't Pharrell? duplicate the solution. <laughs> <It's laughs> Gliders versus Photoshop. <laughs> oh, is that the Iron it's, Throne? Yeah. He has the Iron Throne. It's the Iron Throne. It's ki it's Mad King Ares. Okay. It's Mad King okay, Ares. We got I should have got that quicker. I should have got that quicker. Have, That's true. I have forgotten what the rest of the theory was. All right. But the Mountain know. Robert Strong is the Mad King Ares, no, or, or, or the Mountain no, killed no, no, the Mad no, no. King Ares. Equals that plus the Mountain. Oh, the Mountain. Gregor Klain is the child of Ares Targaryen, King Ares Targaryen, and Rhaella Targaryen. Nah. And Daenerys Targaryen, um, 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 and. Who? Rael Targaryen. Um, uh, her and, ooh, M Melisandre. Melisandre! Yes! He got to say uh. the whole thing. Oh, oh, the mountain is the child of the Mad King Aerys Targaryen <laughs> and Melisandre. Okay. They are the parents of the mountain. Okay. Yes! Okay. Yes! Okay. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I took way too long with the Mad King Aerys. I think that was quite a good Mad King Aerys. I really like how I did his fingernails, mm, his mm. gnarled claws. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't twig <laughs> with that, but that's good. <laughs> Fantastic, stellar performance. Okay. Man, we are good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, three minutes Lost to get that. Three and a half minutes, man. We're fucking great. I at this. thought that was incredible. All right, are you going to rustle up another theory yeah, yeah, yeah. to draw? I'm going to guess it. We're going to kill it. All right. Randomly generating a new theory now. All right. That's so stupid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Okay. All right. You ready, everyone? It can't. It can't be more complicated than Beric kills Biter <laughs> with a Valyrian steel <laughs> arak on the Isle of Faces. That was pretty convoluted. That was. Um, that really so was. Let's start with the that. that All right. It's a king. Place. It's a maybe a Lannister king. Is it King Loren? Is it King Tommen? Is it's an angry king? Is it Joffrey? Um, hang on, how it's do I draw one of these? Things? Angry little sunny king. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm really not. It's a it's a it's a lemon that is leaking from many <laughs> puncture wounds. Um, it it's a explosion. Hang on, it's a sun. I've completely forgotten how this is one of my favorite Some kind animals. Of a fruit. How have I forgotten what it looks That's like? That's an animal. <laughs> <laughs> Put it out of its misery. <laughs> is it a spider? No, it's it's got a, a lot of legs. All right, you got how, how many legs? Eight legs. It's a spider. That's eight legs. Uh, it, it's it an it's eight. an arachnid. It's not. Or is it a squid? It, it could be. A, uh, it, is it a Greyjoy king? Is it an Ironborn king? Um, it's a Greyjoy king. All right, I guess that's uh, King Balon. Uh, that's got it. All right, King Balon Greyjoy. All right, good. Uh, what's next? What was the rest of this fucking theory? All Can right. I look again. 
I'm just going to look again. All right. All right. So yeah, yeah. Okay. King yeah. Balon yep. Greyjoy. What's he doing? Um, What's he up to? Okay. Is he secretly a Targaryen? Is he nissen? He's dead. He's dead. All right. King Balon was killed by someone or, or his death. Oh, he was resurrected. He's res- We've already sorted out a language, haven't we? K- King Balon Greyjoy will be resurrected by R'hllor. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> 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 Fantastic! That was the quickest yet. That was good. The squid threw me. The squid was looking a bit yeah, spidery, um, but we got there. A squid earlier that was like very impressive to mm. my eyes, and mm. I thought, yeah, let's give the squid a shot. And I ended up with this. squids are not easy. Squids uh, are not uh, easy. Uh, 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 as you say, a lemon that's leaking everywhere. Oh goodness. Oh, oh, you know, like how when you draw the sun as a child, um, it's... Oh, I think your gain might have been low for a second there. Oh, Sorry. Not the gain. Oh, no. Uh, when oh. you draw the sun as a child, it looks yeah. a bit like that. Well, yeah, it's got rays coming out every which way. This one's just a bit droopy. It's the droopy sun. The sigil of House Greyjoy. Mm, the floppy fish of House Martell. All right. Shall I draw one? Yes. Let's do your it. Your turn once more. All right. So I'm going to randomly select a theory. We're going to get a... I'm going to not look... Nice canvas. I'm going to keep it secret and therefore also safe. No one but me will know what it is. All right. That is going to be interesting. (laughs) Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Ready, set, go. Go. All right, I'm selecting the color green. Uh, it, uh, forest. The forest I played in the in the school musical in year five, and I fell into a bin. You're gonna have to tell me a bit more about that <laughs> later. <laughs> uh, actually, two completely disconnected stories. I joined them together for, you know, comic effect. A it was a likely story. What have we got there? Green. Is that a dragon? A crocodile? A reed? This is Mira Reed. Or Gianna Reed. I assume Mira Reed, though. Yep. And what's she got there? A trident. A um, pitchfork. Wait, what? All right, uh, I'm going to have to uh, yeah, yeah, check all good, the all thing again. Uh, it's so easy to just complete, like, yeah, zone you, you, in you on you think, one I'm re- All right, I'm, I'm drawing, I'm drawing, I'm drawing. Okay. Uh, a red heart? Is, is this the concept of love? All right. A uh, green, a uh, gold, but uh, is that a crown or is that a skull? Skull and crossbones. Yep. A pirate king. The pirate kings I think of are Euron Greyjoy and Orain Waters. He's very happy to be a pirate king. Yo ho, yo ho. Is it a different pirate king that I haven't named yet? Is it Salador San? Yes. Mira Reed will fall in love with Salador San. Yes. You made that look easy. <laughs> Mira will fall in love with Salador San. That was very quick. That was one one minute 30. Incredible. You could have given him purple eyes. True. Oh, yeah. but that still could have been all right. No, all right. Waters doesn't have... He has purple-ish ring. eyes, doesn't he? No, I think he has grey green eyes. Yeah, he has grey green eyes. That was like the crux of mm. uh, one of my first ever theories. <laughs> what was the theory? Um, oh, I was spitballing completely random bullshit where I noticed that the only two characters whose eyes are described as grey green are Orain Waters and Littlefinger. Amazing. Yeah. So Orain is Littlefinger's bastard son? Yeah. No, that th- there's like some bravo connection there. Ooh, the Bravosi connection. Mm. I want to draw another one. Yeah, go on. It's fun, isn't it? It is what fun. fun. <laughs> we're making and so to much... imagine we were going to just sit here and talk about food descriptions. Imagine finishing a series when we could do some <laughs> other know. bullshit. We were, we were coming like scarily close to concluding dangerously something. close to finishing something. And yeah. as everyone knows, neither of us are about that. I don't feel like myself unless I'm starting three different. Side projects that no one asked for. All right, Hank Green. All right. Yeah, well, Hank, well, (laughs) I think he's a little bit more advanced than me in that particular (laughs) art. But hey. I think he slowed down. The night is but young. He slowed down after that whole, you know. uh, Cellular mishap. Yeah, that's the one. Well, I hear he's doing better now. I'm going to randomly generate a theory from the Ultrift X totally accurate Song of Ice (laughs) and Fire theory generator. 
and I am going to draw it now. Okay, are you ready? Start your engines. My engines are started. Okay. All right. Vroom, 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 vroom. It stopped suddenly. <laughs> um, what am I? Is this the moon? This is this Earth's moon. Uh, mo- uh, the moon is a dragon egg and will crack into a billion tinier dragon eggs. All right, David Lightbringer. I respect it. Is is this a baseball cap? Is someone wearing a... Or is that a frying pan? On top of it? <laughs> is this supposed to be hot pie or like a small child like Rickon or Bran? Mm-hmm. Sweet Robin or... Mm-hmm. Um. Why is he white? Well, yeah, the color is important symbolism, isn't it? Okay, okay. A child of the moon, maybe. Uh, this is, appears to be... Oh, gosh, what am I looking at here? Rah! <laughs> is it an angry bird? Is it red from angry birds? No, it's a sigil. What sigil am I looking at here? It's, um, oh, God, it's a red <laughs> bird on a black background. It's, it's a pretty common sigil. I must be drawing it, but it's... Uh, mm. <laughs> uh, mm. Moon. Moon. Moon boy. Yes. Moon boy. Yes. Secret Targaryen. Yes. <laughs> Moon boy is a Targaryen. <laughs> I... That is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's a lot of bastards around the red cave. I like how your indication of a boy. <laughs> <laughs> a boy has a baseball cap. Of course he does. Uh, I'm surprised he didn't draw like a propeller top on the cap. Yeah, that's a good idea too. Then we would have known it was a boy. I, I, I just tried to make his proportions very... Um... Yeah, boyish. Yeah, yeah. I, I admit that Boyant. this Targaryen sigil, the it yeah, does look not... like a bird. It's not the like typical incarnation of the Targaryen sigil. Yeah, that's yeah, all right. We yeah. got there in the end. We did get there. I di- I didn't want to sound like an idiot when I said Targaryen, and it was something else that I should have known. Yeah, I think both of us have made the mistake of thinking too specific oh, yeah. and obscure. Um, I mean, the only things that are in yeah, like, this... Yeah, I, I jumped to the Osgrey sigil when I'm pretty sure that this generator has nothing to do with The Eustace chances Osgrey. of me mentioning Eustace Osgrey in this theory generator are low, but they have just increased as a result of this conversation. Oh, no. I will have to make some adjustments <laughs> to this theory generator. Shall I draw one more? Yeah, go on then. All right. I'm going to randomly generate a theory, and I'm not going to tell anyone what it is, and everyone has to guess... What it is. Is the chat playing along? They'd better be. They better be. We'll ha- we'll engage with the chat in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they've been keeping score. All right. Um, are you ready? Yep, let's go. Drawing now. I've noticed the effect of releasing content on the community and then people come to your content and they're like, <clears throat> man, I've encountered all of these ideas before. Why do you think that is, mate? Like someone commented on the fake Ice and Fire Theories quiz I did all those years ago. It's only one year ago. Is this Homer Simpson um, shouting a, a fart in the wind? Um, someone commented, like, I've encountered all of these theories before. What are you talking about? And I'm pretty sure it's just because of that video I made, right? The the, the Tyrek is a horse. <laughs> yeah, that's theory. just an actual... It's a meme now. It is very common. Like, I see it on Reddit and stuff. You have created a meme, Glaze. Yeah, and then people come to that video and they're like, what are you talking about? Everyone knows that theory. And it's like, well, they do now. Yeah. You know, that's that's the reward you get for making some kind of an impact on a culture is, this- is that... Um, <laughs> You don't get any recognition. It's like, 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 like <laughs> no, that, that's what happens. Like, like when a cultural thing graduates to the point of um, ubiquity, ubiquity yeah. y- it, you lose ownership over yeah, well, it. Well, you, know? you know, that's fine. Yeah, I think it is So fine. is this someone burping? Is, is that a burp that I've just witnessed? No. No X. You get, draw the gallows for the hangman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, blue. Oh, it's just someone with really bad smelling breath, isn't it? Yeah, I, mm, I might have to add some more to that. 
Oh, that's a white walker for sure. Or 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 a white or um um what you call it? Like the night queen, whatever she is. No. No, not that. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> uh -uh. You need a buzzer. Yes. All make, right. Make use of that soundboard you're always going on about. I don't want it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh. uh. It could be Torment. He's always had blue eyes. It's Sabat. No, it, it's a flying horse. No, it's a stag, right? Or an elk. Is this cold hands? Yes. Um, a flying horse. I'm going to have to but glance the, at the theory but again. But the wings come out of the head. All right. Um, okay. You're going you're gonna to laugh at this. Oh, that'll be a first. Oh, okay. So these two people are twins. <laughs> okay. So the reason... <laughs> The reason why Gliders got that so quickly is because we did a practice round in which something similar to this was drawn. And <laughs> I... <laughs> I regret everything. Yeah, but like, you, it's a great way of symbolizing that these two people are twins because you can clearly see them enjoying a womb together. <laughs> <laughs> They've gone halvesies on the rent. Oh, It's a share womb. Oh, no. <laughs> And look, the the person doing the gestation is very happy about it too. Who is this other person though? Hmm. All right, I'm gonna have to get creative. Um, I thought we agreed to never get creative again. <laughs> is that a reliable reference that you like? It, is it okay to make that? Like, do, do people know that? Is that ubiquitous enough? Oh, it's got millions of views on um, YouTube.gov. What, what, what's it called? Uh, please hug me, I'm scared. Don't hug me, I'm scared. Don't hug me, so I'm scared. So it's got a table. A table. A table. Are you going to paint it? Is it going to be the painted table? Oh, he's gone and zoomed in. Yeah, we're, we're going pro mode now. He's got balls on the table. This is making me think of the Counselor Balls from House of the Dragon. Tick, tick. Um, so the blue... Uh, the blue Counselor Ball, is that... Uh, didn't they give that to um fucking the 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 dick guy? <laughs> dick guy? <laughs> Who's the dick guy? Big Dick Jasper Wild Iron Rod. <laughs> oh, he is the dick. <laughs> You're not being crude. That's George Martin being crude. Yeah, yeah. It's George Martin's dick joke. Uh, and we've got a red lady. Is that Cersei Lannister? Because she's a red lady with gold hair. Okay. Oh. So if Cersei's the red one, then who's the blue one? Hmm. Um, 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 um. Oh, God. Is it Harris Swift? N um. Giles no. Rosby? Giles Rosby is twins with... Uh, yes. Who, who did I say that was? Cold Hands. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Giles Rosby and Cold Hands oh, are twins. Oh, he's coughing. He's coughing. Sorry, I thought it was burping or, like, bad breath. Yeah, well, it's difficult. It's difficult to draw coughing. I mean, I guess when people cough, they sort of hunch over a bit. Yeah. Like, if I got the body language a bit better, that would have looked more like coughing. But yeah, no, Giles he's, Rosby. He's a hard um, character to symbolize, for sure. Yeah. Well, well, we got the twins thing perfect, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, would you like to draw one? I'm happy not, but I'd also be happy to. I'll do one more then. Okay. I'll do one more. All right. So, I'm going to randomly generate. You another... seem to be having fun where you are. <laughs> I am having fun drawing, you know? All right. Um... Ooh. Okay. Whoa. Okay. I, I'm going to start drawing. Okay. I'm going to start going, what? Huh? <laughs> uh, wah, 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 uh, wah, 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 a dog? All right. Um. Uh, uh, wah, wah, Got a little house. Is he going to put a red door there? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that one. Different house. Different house. Angry, angry fella with smaller person, the small child. That's that's the girl hair. You know that these people are girls. 
three girls. Angry bloke with a house. Three daughters. If I were to make guesses... Oh, even more daughters. Holy shit. Are those uh, wives... Are these daughter wives? Is this Craster? Yes. Okay, we got Craster. Disgusting. I like his house. That's exactly how I imagined it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Completely a red lady makes me think Melisandre usually. Yep. That's easy. She's not even on fire yet. <laughs> That's what I did when you when you weren't getting Melisandre. I set her on fire. Melisandre is going to kill. No? Oh, they're going to duel. They're, they're battling each other. Yes. Okay. Is it just that? Is it Craster and Melisandre? Oh, no. There's more to oh, it. Oh, no. There's more going on here. We've got a long way to go. At Starfall? Is this Starfall? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Craster and Melisandre will duel at Starfall. Is that the theory? Yes! That's so stupid! What do you mean? <laughs> Melisandre will be defeated in battle by Craster at Starfall. Very well known theory. Oh my god. How, you got, you got I, that quite I, quickly. I would love to know how Craster plans on getting to Starfall. That this, that should actually be the like the other segment of this yeah. live stream we, we is that we have to time ago. we have to actually discuss <laughs> how plausible this theory is. Well, well, here's the thing: Craster uh, is dead, and Craster is at Craster's keep, so that means that Craster is likely to be resurrected by the White Walkers that and the Army the of the Dead as they come south for characters to die. Yeah. So the Army of the South is is the Army that is coming south with Craster, and it makes sense that they would eventually come to Starfall because yep. the Long Night is meant to be an apocalyptic. Yeah, and that's event. where stars fell, and the Long Night started when the stars fell onto the Earth, creating the Long Night because of the Moon meteors crashing up and sending all the dust into the Earth. Everyone knows this, as everyone knows. Well, us and David Lightbringer. <laughs> Um, so Starfall is linked to the Long Night and stuff, and so Melisandre is I mean, dedicated more, to opposing the Long Night, so it makes sense that well, Melisandre Craster would... Craster become, like, a lieutenant in the Army of the Dead, because he's so debauched as a human that he, he stands for everything against... Yeah. Oh, no, he's sort of their ally, because he gave them children. Yeah, Craster is the one human in A Song of Ice and Fire who has an alliance and an understanding with the White Walkers. Well, that's made explicit to the audience. It yeah. could be others, aren't there? I think Euron might might have a dalliance if he gets half an opportunity. And, you know, there's the um, that Weebwood gate at the night fort that the Night's Watch sent baby boys through. Yeah. I wonder what that was for. I mean, I, mean, I, I am a big fan of the theory that the black gate was used for human sacrifice but in fairness there's no direct evidence or hints that the black gate was used for oh, but human it's sacrifice so cool it's, it's very theory. creepy i mean it could have just been a gate but like it is explicitly a secret gate so so what is the purpose of the secret gate and of the night to God? go through it you pass through the mouth of the old gods yeah it's like you're being consumed by the gods it's a sacrifice the, yeah the symbolism of it is, is quite rife but are you sacrificing to the White Walkers, or are you sacrificing to the Old Gods? Because it's a weird face. Mm. I mean, are they one and the same? Yeah, well, that's the other thing. Because there's this concept of the Great Other. Like, Melisandre seems to think that the White Walkers are ruled by something called the Great Other, which um, might be the Old Gods and the Weirwoods, or a aspect of the Weirwoods, yeah. because the Old Gods are described as being nameless. And the Great Other is said to have a name that is secret that must not be spoken. So the Great Other is also nameless. And so I think it makes a lot of sense that the Great Other is, like, a part of the Old Gods. Because the Old Gods is, like, a hive Well, mind. maybe this ultimate opponent of Melisandre, this personification, the nameless face of the face of, of the Old Gods, is Blood Raven, Because he does sort of present himself as a face of the Old Gods, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. maybe that's... And Melisandre thinks that when she has that Absolutely. vision of Blood Raven and thinks, yeah. is that the enemy? Which is really something because Melisandre is Shiera Seastar. <laughs> Look, you joke, but like, I, I think it is pretty reasonable. I don't know if I was joking. That was that was sort of an HJ, sort of a half joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I, I think it makes some sense that Bloodraven might be trying to steal Bran's body or something. 
for the old gods and for the continuation of the old gods. And like, like Bran has met forty or so children of the forest in the cave. Leaf is the only one of whom who speaks the common tongue. So Leaf is pretty much the one child of the forest who's like representing these ch- children of the forest. And is this one cave full of this one group of children of the forest? Are they really representative of what the old gods are all about? Or- well, you see, in season six, episode five of Game of Thrones, um, those are the only children. That's that's it. Yeah. Well, I there's, think there's nothing more. Well, I think that actually is also supported by the books. I think the appendix of A Dance with Dragons says that the children of the forest in, in Blood Raven's Cave are the last of their dying race. Are the appendices written from an omniscient third person's perspe- perspective, though? Is it written by God? Is it written by George? Yeah, or not... is it written from the perspective of each character who has relevant information on each of these situations? Yeah, that's true. So it's entirely it's, possible. It's like from the reader's perspective, really. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good point. And, and so I, I think that it's basically plausible that, you know, Bloodraven tries to steal Bran's body, so Bran, like, defeats Bloodraven and they escape the cave. And then all these other children of the forest are like, oh, you were hanging out with Leaf? Oh, those guys are weird. Yeah, like, she was a fucking weird. Yeah, <laughs> Leaf was nuts. Like, we yeah, do we, not... Yeah, no. Like, we but, sincerely are well-intentioned tree hippies, but Leaf and Bloodraven? They are... Kablees. They are hardcore. <laughs> oh, my God. If I knew... Um... So, so the yeah, and 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 that's really interesting as like a hive mind thing, right? Because you'd think that the hive mind would make the old gods all like united, but like George Martin in and Seven Times Never Kill Man, he wrote about a hive mind mm-hmm. of golden eyed, short statured, low technology hippies, just like the child of the children of the I forest. Think he hasn't written anything new in decades. No, he really hasn't. Um, and one of the interesting things that happens in and Seven Times Never Kill Man is that some of the Jainshi, they're called the the hive mind Dalian critters. They get broken off from the hive mind when the humans kill their pyramids, which is equivalent to the humans killing the weirwoods. They are like the um, thing that is worshipped. My point is that some of the Jainshi get broken from the hive mind, and so they sort of have different opinions, and they actually have like a, a broader view of the world because it turns out that the gods, the pyramids, were restricting the Jainshi's behavior and making them reproduce less and making them less curious and making them like stuck in like a, a primitive way of life. So, like, my point is that maybe if Children of the Forest like sort of broke away from the old gods and broke away from the weirwoods, they might be very different. And they might, you know, be against mm. some of the things that the old gods do. And um, so, yeah, like the possibility of there being like children of the forest, like schisms and factions that break off from the gods, I think is interesting. And maybe the great other is such. Maybe the great other is like an entity that broke off from the old gods. Maybe by like, you know, like the idea that the White Walkers might be the souls of Children of the Forest that came out of the Weirwood Net and became their own thing. And that's what the Great Other is. And so the job of Azor Ahai is to put it back into the Weirwood Net and to restore balance to the Force. I think by continuing to restrict their force of curiosity and knowledge of the world. Well, yeah, which does sound fucked up, doesn't it? I mean, other parts of Azor Ahai sound pretty fucked up too. Yeah. I don't think that the story is an entirely um, uncritical take on this sort of mythology (laughs) yeah but like but you know if the ending is bittersweet will our heroes do something commit an atrocity against the children of the forest and the old gods and the white walkers in order to survive like uh, the the whole point of john's arc is about trying to figure out how to do the right thing what i found in the endings of other works of george's is that the like that there's an like tilt towards a more open broad perspective of things but it comes at the cost of something very great innocence yeah innocence life yeah freedom yeah I don't know. well i mean disillusionment like, absolutely is... disillusionment is a major aspect of basically every conclusion i've seen from him yeah yeah, it's all about characters who start well, like think about Brienne, Jesus, naive and idealistic, Absolutely. and then they learn horrifying things that you know it, that they mature, but they also are sort of darkened by the fucking horrors of the world. But but they persist Arya, in Sansa, Brienne, Bran, John. I, I mean, another like example is like the A Song for Leah, mm-hmm. which is also about a hive mind, an alien hive mind, and like this guy's trying to get back with his ex or his love interest, and then she just decides to join the alien hive mind, and it's this really weird ending where he's just like, huh, 
you know, my this girl decided to become part of an alien organism instead of be with me. And I guess that's just how things are. <laughs> and like that's just sort of the tone of the ending. I think that was George working through a breakup. I think most of <laughs> I think all of George's books are him yeah. working Yeah, go- through the one breakup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who do you think Lysa Tully is named after, huh? I think it's it bears no relevance. Well, it bears no relevance. Uh, do, do you think we should um, respond to some super chats? Maybe. Oh uh, yeah, let's. They seem to like it when we do that. Um, some of them do. Thanks for the super chat from John, who says "Gimba Gunga Gunga Glimbisco Bagooby." Thank you. Thanks, Wolf, who says "I'm excited for this one, Swamp and Glibble." So are we. Kirk says, let it be known, I'm watching this instead of playing Baldur's Gate 3, the things I do for you guys. Have you been playing that? I haven't. I, I made the terrible, terrible, awful mistake of um, playing Starfield and being like hopeful about that game and then learning that Starfield is actually a, a bad game. It's just oh, not no. finished. Yeah. I'm sorry. So I realized that what I should have done was, was played Baldur's Gate 3. Have you played that? I have sworn myself to a, a vow of not playing any new games until I do the th- I'm done doing the thing I'm supposed to be doing the thing that shall not be named exactly mm. um and that was really a terrible decision because everyone's talking and like no one's going to be talking about it by the time I get around to playing it mm. <laughs> oh well it is fun to play a game while it's relevant like that's yeah, why I like I've barely ever done that got Starfield right away yeah same yeah like I never get to a game until years after like even my favorite it. games like the Binding of Isaac I didn't play until a decade after it had come out <laughs> Do you see they're adding online co-op to the no Binding of way. Isaac? No way. I know. No way. That's a game changer. Yeah. For we, you specifically. We could do streams <laughs> of us playing the Binding of Isaac with randos added live. Oh, that'd be crazy. Imagine what a glorious shit show that'll be. Oh, we're trying not to swear, aren't we? Oh, you failed at that like 40 seconds into the stream. Did I really? Yeah, you did. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you, Hellfire Blue, who says first time making a stream. Love you guys. Is that a penguin emoji i believe it is interesting it looks strange italicized like that why did you did, why was the emoji italicized i guess the whole thing is italicized thank you logan schmidt who says wow i finally caught a live i have questions for y'all one do you think current book Tyrion would have slept with sansa when they got married ill two who do you think the real tywin is but behind his armor wow Mm. Um, well, in the books, you know, Tyrion marries Sansa, and there is this whole thing about how Tyrion wants... Part of Tyrion wants to have sex with it is Sansa. difficult to read. But she's really young. Like, what is she, like, 14 or something in the books? So, yeah. Um, and also, like, Tywin told Tyrion that he has to have sex with Sansa so they can claim the North. And Tyrion has this sort of internal conflict about whether to do that or not. And yeah, it's very gross. Um, and I mean, yeah, like in book five, Tyrion is in a really dark place and he hates everyone and he sexually assaults people, at least one person and threatens to assault other people. So yeah, maybe, maybe he would have, um, maybe he would have. I think, I think, yeah. Yeah. I think he would. Tyrion is monstrous in book five. Who do you think the real Tywin is behind his armor, Gladys? Oh, he's like a soccer hooligan. He's just like your regular dad who gets a bit heated at certain <laughs> points in time. He's like Daryl Kerrigan from the castle, you know? I'm trying to imagine what Tywin would be like without the daddy issues, but I don't think that there would well, be anything there left. Is, he is just the daddy issues. He is all daddy he, issues. So Tywin is a, like the most fragile ego <laughs> in the story. Mm. Yeah, he is um, just trying to compensate for... Mm everything about his childhood and Titus, you know, feeling humiliated um, by Titus. He knows there are parts of him that are his father and he hates them and he hides them, but he can't stop being them. How does he hide his um, secret uh, activities <laughs> with <hell>. sex workers? <laughs> what... Can you can you the, tell the, me the specific Gladys, apparatus he designed so that he could hide how such does behaviors? He traverse his way to the brothel well, you see, where he participates in that activity. Coming from there's a stable in King's Landing, is there? And from the back oh, of really? this stable is, is a secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. <laughs> secret tunnel. <laughs> secret tunnel. <laughs> Through the castle. Secret, 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 secret tunnel. tunnel. Yeah. yeah. That was so loud. 
It was really loud. Yeah. So oh, I'm probably so turn sorry. that down for next time. Oh my goodness! But I, 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 I hope that that, that incredibly time. deliberate lead up was enough warning to people. <laughs> my God, I'm so sorry for everyone who was trying to sleep. Um, a secret tunnel, indeed. Um, would you like to draw a picture now? Do you want to draw more pictures? Yeah, I can draw a picture. Yeah, let's, let's draw, draw some, some more pictures. More pictures. Um, we will we will get back to some more super chats. Uh, we're going to draw some more beautiful art. For those who don't know, we're doing Pictionary, Song of Ice and Fire theories, randomly generated. Glidus is going to draw one, I guess one. And you can play at home. <laughs> Vote now with your phones. Yeah, I I would love if people in the comments can say, like, what what are their favorite drawings? <laughs> Do you think we can sell them as merchandise? Do you think we can, like, sell t-shirts or as like, these? Or, like, get them printed onto dis plates. Oh, that's a fantastic <laughs> idea. <laughs> People... That is that's such a waste of money. <laughs> oh my god! Get get your least favorite family member a framed uh, display uh, image of our rendition of Beric Dondarrion killing Biter with a Valyrian steel arrack on the Isle of Faces. <laughs> All right, I believe I'm ready to start drawing now. I'm ready to guess. Okay, I've forgotten how to draw. What is Glidus gonna draw? Are you gonna start the timer? Oh, let's start the timer. I mean, everyone wants to know the stats, right? <laughs> Who's what's the fu- All right, it's yellow. It could be a Lannister. It could be a lion. Oh, that's. It could be a Mar. Could it be a Mar? An Ash Mark? All right, none of that. It's probably a little Lannister. It's Tommen or Joffrey or Missella. That looks like a little Lannister. <laughs> Who's the me? infamously little Lannister? T- to well, Tyrion. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Tyrion. Hey, is... I-, I was gonna do this. Yeah, and you then... can. Oh, all right. I like that. Yeah, the different colored eyes. You can I barely see that, but but you eyes. see what I'm getting at there. All right, there's Tyrion Lannister. And then, I guess the color I'm looking for is this. Um, gray. So is that the Shrouded Lord? Nah. Is it grayscale? Is it a stone man? Is it is it the mountain? <laughs> You're thinking far too grim. Uh, is it Shay? Um, is it? Hang on, maybe I should have gone white. Tyene Sand. On, I'm it's... just gonna draw. Um, t- all right, so it's Tyrion with a <laughs> oh lady of some kind, a oh grey lady. Is it Stoneheart? Stoneheart <laughs> is a grey lady. That is a horse. <laughs> Tyrek Lannister. Uh, no. <laughs> Fuck. It's Tyrek. It's a wolf. It's a. It's a Stark. It's a Stark lady. It's Catelyn. It's Sansa. It's Arya. It's it's Arya. It's Arya. It's Arya. It's Arya. Yeah. And then Tyrion and Arya. All right. Tyrion. And... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tyrion and Arya are twins. Stop the clock. <laughs> Why have we got so many twins? And why do I keep having to see this monstrosity? <laughs> Oh no! I mean, you're the one who made this visual shorthand for twins. I didn't want to. How else do you show that two people are twins by than by drawing them in the same womb? I don't know any other way to do it. Now, Tyrion being in a womb is a pretty um long-standing theory trope. It sure is. How would you indicate that this womb is time traveling? Would you draw a <laughs> clock? Yeah, I, I guess and, so. And then like a an arrow pointing the reverse traversal of time. <laughs> are, are, you, are you into all those uh, Tyrion is a genetic chimera theories where um, he's a mix of three different people's DNA in one? I'm a big fan of that, yeah. Yeah? Um, it's so impractical. Mm. I really love it. For that reason, I, d- I just love bringing obscure real world genetics into fantasy literature. I mean, you don't know? you think George thinks about genetics? He also has said in interviews several times, This is fantasy, not sci fi. Stop trying to bring sci fi yeah, into my but fantasy. Previously, he has said that fantasy and sci fi are the same thing. Well, they have the same heart, but they're still different genres. Yeah, like, well, just because he. It, it, his, the way he said it was, um, isn't it the window dressing? Or yeah, like they're, they're, it's the same genre. Yeah, but different but hats. but but I think he wants consistent window dressing in each project. Like yes, I like he sees them he wants, as interchangeable, yeah. but only like in between projects, not within yeah, yeah. projects. Yeah, I'm not saying that. Like, it would be weird if a spaceship landed on King's out, Landing. That would be weird. Although this, you tell me the sand ship doesn't feel like a spaceship. Yeah, I, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> you wouldn't make a spaceship out of stone, though, surely. Oh, but it's so cool. It is very cool. All right. And that's why the Andals are aliens. Yeah. I'm going to generate a new theory now. All right. Generate a new theory, and I'll guess it. And I'm going to get it so quickly this time. You you can't sneak nothing past me. I am zoned in I'm like a hornet. Okay. Yep, we can do like that one. A, like a pointy hornet. Let- I'm going to 
figure it out. Um, let's go. Okay. Gonna start the timer. Start the timer. All right. All right. Now. All right. It's a race All right. where the Usain Bolt of Pictionary. That's a line. That's a square. More of a quadrilateral. Uh, Pythagoras. Uh, let's put some. It's nice a little mouse trap. Little cream. Cream. It's a lemon <laughs> cake. <laughs> It's a lemon cake. Uh, it's a cream cake. It's a cake. Well, maybe I've drawn the wrong sort. It's of a this wedding thing. cake. It's a strawberry cake. No, 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 it's a pecan pie. No, no. Oh, uh, it's a pecan uh, pie. It's a pie. It's a wedding pie. Full of. It's a wedding pie. It's a pie. It's a pie. It's, it's hot pie. It's hot pie. It's hot pie. All right. It's hot pie. What? What is hot pie? I've doing? actually forgotten. All right. All right. All right. All right. Hot yes. Pie. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Hot pie is Azora High. Hot pie is a Targaryen. Fucking. <laughs> 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 45 fucking seconds Incredible <laughs> Incredible I, I mean look In fairness Like When I made this generator I think I weighted it Fairly heavily towards Saying that characters Are Targaryens yeah. It's a pretty good but, like, guess We've gotten to the point now Where this Represents A complicated idea Yeah Yeah but, No on it Like if, if we Did this For 50 hours we could just start like a yeah. few strokes of the pen and there's we would this, know which theory we're talking there's about there's a video on the internet of jacob collier and herbie hancock playing keyboard at each other they're like communicating complex ideas to each other just by playing single chords like musical ideas or just any ideas it's like they're talking to each other just by playing certain arrangements of pitches on That's their cool. keyboards and they're like oh yeah 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 and oh yeah <laughs> and that's what we're doing here is we're developing a new language i like i, I threw a song of ice and fire in yeah. theories it, pictionary it, in in dune like the the noble families have these little languages secret languages mm. of like clicks and hums and little like so you can communicate without people even knowing that you're communicating because that's real isn't it like real world cultures come up with all sorts of like all the atreides ways are just of beatboxing to each other that's right <laughs> i i read an article about like like ancient paleolithic cave art um you know people have put their hand up on the cave wall and then spit ochre and it would leave like a handprint that's a really common kind of cave art yeah. but they've noticed scientists have noticed that a lot of the handprint cave art in caves the hands don't have five fingers they have like four fingers or, or three fingers or like weird arrangements of fingers and so there's all these series like they're doing like the rock horns to each other yeah, well, some of them have that. They're some leaving of them have messages that. about the place or about themselves or about each other. Yeah, that's exactly what the scientists are theorizing, is that these different, like, holding up different numbers of fingers on hands on cave art might be a form of language Holy or a form shit. of symbolism. That's a written language from the Paleolithic era. Yeah, that might be the oldest kind of written language or code or symbolism is, is from... I mean, I mean the, the other sort of line of reasoning is that some scientists reckon that um, people have actually had their fingers cut off as a form of like punishment or ritual or just accident. Um, so they may have actually been missing fingers. But yeah, the other theory is that they're just holding up different numbers of fingers as a form of communication. Neat. Neato. Anyway, here's hot pie and secretly a <laughs> Back to something important. Uh, <laughs> All right, you want to do another one? Uh, yeah, let's do me another one. All right. What's up I've next? I've got us here a new blank canvas, and I'm going to generate a new theory for everyone. All right. I'm so ready. Uh, no, not that one. <laughs> no, not that one. G give me something with... Uh... Yeah, we... no, that's the same as the other one. Hmm. That's kind of boring. Oh, that one's juicy. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, right, let's start the timer. All right. All right. Uh, what masterpiece am I going to see today? All right, that's grey. That could be Shireen with grayscale. That could be Lady Stoneheart. It's, it's a dead person. <laughs> it's a dead person. It's okay. a it's a corpse. It's a white. Uh, it's the Shrouded Lord. Except, well, hang it's on. a stone <laughs> man. Is the Shrouded Lord even? No, it is in the here. The Shrouded Lord is video. absolutely in the old Shrift X theory generator. Resurrected, resurrected Lady Stoneheart. Lady Stoneheart. All right. Um, Lady Stoneheart is what red. R'hllor, arrow, sword. Lady Stoneheart will kill. Lady Stoneheart will kill. Uh, uh, Stone Mat Shireen. Uh, little grey girl. Surely Shireen. Grey girl. Um, uh, Aya is a grey girl. Yes! Lady Stoneheart will kill Aya! We're too, we're too, <laughs> we're good, too, at too good at this. We're too good at this. <laughs> 
<laughs> we've got to up the difficult. All right, all right, all right. Should, should we do this? Should we solicit some prompts from the audience to? Well, I think we should go through the super chats to see if someone's already done that. Oh, or... But then we'll both see them. Well, I won't look. You look. Oh God! You, you want me to now. scroll through the super chats? Yeah. Just, all right. Yeah. All right, so all right. you you just have a quick squiz if there's any drawing Has prompts. Has anyone given us any? prompts we will read all of these later don't worry yeah we will read your super chats at the end of the stream um, but if anyone has like a good idea no 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 one has sent a super chat some kind of song of ice and fire theory or song of ice and fire thing to draw do you want to just look into live chat i've got as one well? in the live chat here yep all right yeah all right oh, but that's an actual theory that's like an incredibly commonly held theory yeah let's let's try and do a difficult one um, these randomly generated theories, like that, 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 don't put any stock in their actual uh, believability. We are not endorsing these theories Although just Lady, by drawing. The them. reason I chose Lady Stoneheart will kill Arya because, like, that's pretty juicy, right? I think Arya will kill Lady Stoneheart. Uh, the other way round. I mean, yes, that makes absolute sense. Hmm. Um. Yeah, we can do that one. All right. Honestly, that kind of makes some sense of like the TV show. Had Aya kill the Night King, and they sort of made it about like Aya knowing death and Aya killing death, and Aya has that weird sort of dance with the whites, and like uh, maybe the TV show stole that from George, and George's actual plan will be for Aya to kill Stoneheart because Stoneheart is a symbol of death. All right, Blue, uh, Tully, Frey's twins. That's the twins. House Frey. Um, what is House Frey up to? What is the twins up to? That's a person. That's uh, just a little dude, um, just hanging it's out. It's not supposed to be a little dude. It's um, Great John Umber. <laughs> it is Littlefinger. The twins will be will be controlled by, or at the twins. Is that hair? Or is that a woman? <laughs> is that a cloak? <laughs> Only women have hair, apparently. Is that a... Is that a I've seen bathroom signs. Um, how do I signify that this is... Um, well, what if I just... Uh... It's a... Uh, Per, a person I'm tempting to who will get the twins oh that is a, a fray yeah right that is a fray so it's Walder Frey or it's Edmund Frey or it's a Walder Frey Walder Frey Walder Frey equals w- Wal- alright Walder Frey is Azor Ahai Walder Frey is a Targaryen Walder Frey is Hot Pie Walder F- don't tell me someone's twin Walder Frey is another fray <laughs> Walder Frey is Big Walder Frey Walder Frey is Little Walder Frey Walder Frey is Black Walder Frey Walder Frey is Ryman Frey Walder Frey is... <laughs> Walder Frey is every... F- Omni-Walder! omni It's the Omni-Walder theory! All Walders are the same Walder! That's fantastic! All Walders have the same Walder mind, the Ur walder I thought you'd appreciate that. The Walder of all time and space. Incredible. Uh. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Imagine being a fray. That really took it out of me. (laughs) Really demanded every artistic um, fibre of me. It really uses the old brain pan, for sure. How do I communicate that all Walters are the same Walter? (laughs) A lot of equal signs make sense. Um, Yeah, I would be proud to put this on the display and ship it out. Yeah. Hang on, let me just arrange these layers more, you know, realistically. (laughs) If If I ever walk down the street and see someone... With one of these d- drawings, beautiful artworks on a t-shirt, I I will lose my mind. Absolutely. Should we uh, get another uh, get another prompt from the live chat? Yeah, or maybe I'll just pick another one from my own bullshit mind. Yeah, sure. We'll see. Anyone have anything interesting here though? All right, I am prepared for whatever insanity. Oh, why is it? I've selected the wrong preset it would appear oh god oh it's because i copied something to the clipboard i was just using the web, web large large and then change it to black web large just like you and me oh yeah we web large <laughs> like rohan weber i web large um i can do that one okay yep let's do it all right Oops, i'm ready that, i've just gone back to there let's... not hot pie is a targaryen <laughs> not again <laughs> All right. Yellow, Lannister, Tyrion. Little little Lannister's got to be Tyrion. All right. Tyrion is Tywin Lannister. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tyrion is Tywin. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Tyrion is Tywin Lannister. Someone suggested it in the in the live chat. I imagine we, having got da- it down in fifteen and a half seconds. Ima- imagine having daddy issues with yourself. <laughs> yeah, that was imagine that. <laughs> oh boy. Um wow. Good yeah. suggestion, whoever that was. Yeah, I mean good guessing. That's absolutely a point for you. Ten points. Do you want to draw one or me? Uh, let's change over again. All right. Let's let you have another shot at this. All right. Uh, in the chat, give me some suggestions, please. S tier drawing. Give me some suggestions of what I should draw for Gladys to guess in our riveting game of A Song of Ice and Fire Theory Pictionary. Um, I'm going to have a look if there's any prompts in the All super good. chats. Um, now that we've told them that that's the thing they can do. Yep. I'm not in the super chats. I'll look at the live chats. They, they simply don't care. Uh, man, there's some real specific ones. <laughs> I'll give you that. All right. There's, all right. You there's guys a good sure one. know how to be way too much. All right, Glider Sand has a good suggestion for me. Are you ready to to guess? Yeah. You better be yeah. ready. Yes. Let's see how my son does. All right. We're going to start the timer. Ready, set, go. Let's go. Okay. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, it's a it's a like a 10-gallon hat. Okay. Who's a cowboy? With someone with an eye patch it would appear. Someone with a hat. Oh, pirate hat and then the right. It's, it's your on. Yep. Um, it's a terrible pirate hat. I'm just going to say. God, what was the rest of the theory? You're on Greyjoy. That's the theory. He writes his own theories. Oh no! What? What? Oh, what's the other part is of it, the theory? Is it the one where he's a faceless man hired by himself oh, oh, to oh, act oh, like oh, himself? Oh, oh. Uh, the one I made up. Did I make that one up? Uh, what am I looking at here? Is that a, is that a turnip? <laughs> Close. <laughs> a, a purple carrot, a parsnip. <laughs> Come on. Uh, an onion. It's not an onion. Uh, oh oh oh! It's a beet. <laughs> yes. Right, you, you're on beets, Tom and yep. Uh, <laughs> y- y- you're on beats, yeah. I'll give that. You're to on you. beats. That's you're on the beats, yeah. You're on will will ban will ban beats. You're on is secretly a beat. Yes, oh, I, I actually uh, yes. You're on is a beat. Oh wow! I kind of forgot the exact details <laughs> of that one after I saw it. You're on is a beat. Oh, that's, yes, that's good. That's yes. Good. All right. All right. We'll try again. We'll try again. Yeah, I, I'm finding it difficult to draw a, a pirate hat. If I'm being honest. All right. Um. <laughs> All right. I've got one for you. Are you ready to guess? This time I'll remember what it is. More ready than I'll ever be. All right. Let's go. Uh oh. Uh oh. Disregard the first 10 seconds of this timer. All right. So. We've got. The color gray. Color gray. Ambiguous. Is this a Stark we're looking at again then? Oh, oh, this is Lyanna Stark. She's got blue flowers in her hair, blue roses, blue winter roses. Equals Lyanna Stark is the rum roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lyanna Stark. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Hmm. Uh, so it's a, it, it's another Stark. I I assume that's a that's a doggy you're drawing. So it is another Stark. Is it Arya? Is is Lyanna Stark? Is Arya Stark? That's so stupid. I didn't want to say it out loud. Um. Oh, oh, time traveling. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lyanna Stark is time traveling Arya Stark. Yes, yeah. Lyanna Stark is time traveling Arya yeah. Stark. Perfect. 
Sorry, I would have got that sooner. I just didn't want to say it out loud because it was so dumb. I think it makes a certain amount of sense because they're said to look similar. <laughs> okay. So they must be the same person. That is true. What else could it be? I think people might sometimes be separate people. No. No way. Um, should we answer some super chat? I think we shall. Slash should. All right. Thanks for the super chat from Ola, who says, How many flea bottom wizards from Singer's Stew? Wizards? Truly the hard hitting questions here. Is is this asking how many wizards are in the Singer's Stew? I mean, wh- wh- well, no, that's a good question because Varus got castrated by a oh, wizard. Good point, good point. Uh, if the wizard was looking for more people to castrate, he might have come to flea bottom. Why? <laughs> Because there's poor people there to be exploited what, by the but, evil but, wizard. But don't most theories have, have it set in that Varus was castrated for certain reasons of his lineage? Well, King's Landing is where Targaryens have been for 300 years. That's true. You must imagine that there's a shit ton of uh, Targaryen blood running around, like Renifer Longwaters. Exactly. Everyone's favourite character, Renifer Longwaters. Imagine trying to draw him in Pictionary. <laughs> How do you draw someone being long-winded? Um... So, I think that logically, if uh, Targaryen bastard children attract wizards, then there would be a lot of wizards in Flea Bottom, and therefore Singer's Stew, when Tyrion kills uh, Simeon Silvertongue and puts him in the stew, if any other wizards were murdered, they might also be thrown into the bowl of brown. It's a hive mind. Oh, you think all that magical blood going into the stew? Yeah. It's like Jojen well, well, it Yeah, it kind of is. I, I mean, they're thematically connected, this um, coagulated amalgamation <laughs> of different people's bodily you know, food, flesh. Yeah, I mean, the idea of, of, of consuming and you give and that eating. sentience by putting a wizard or two in there. And here's the thing, those bowls of brown have been boiling the same pots for months and months. Yeah. Because they just put in more ingredients as they take bowls out of it. So, like, the same wizard... Like, like each wizard you put into the soup... Yep, strengthens its sentience. And that, like, 0.01% of that wizard remains in that yep. soup indefinitely. So you could have, like, over time, over 300 years, you could have, like, a thousand different wizards. It's the same as what Euron Greyjoy does on the silence. I was going to say that, that he feeds warlocks to each other. Or- it's like, um... It's this thing that keeps coming up is feeding telepathically empowered people to other people to strengthen their experiences, right? Yeah, it's it's just that idea of sacrificing and certain blood is more powerful than others. And so I guess that means that the sparrows who are the poor in King's Landing... Who will be eating the singers. Who will be eating the singers. Right, they're telepathically enhanced because they've been eating all of these wizards. Yes. And so the High Sparrow... As the <laughs> like is like the psychic manifestation of all of these he's wizard eating sparrows. Raven. He is their blood he's raven. He's like the face of the hive mind. I mean, kind of. Yeah. What is a religion? What is if the, not the, a? What is the head of a spiritual movement? But the face of a hive mind. Yeah. Coming at you, Pope Francis. Yeah. Religion is defined by sharing ideas and ideals and 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 yeah yeah I. Ideas. Telepathic groupthink. So, therefore, <laughs> the, the High Sparrow is Euron Greyjoy? Oh, I thought it was Pyat Pre. Oh, drat. Well, they Back could... to the drawing board. Back to the drawing <laughs> board. Um, Spis Uchmich says, no idea what's going on, but happy to catch this one. Fair enough. <laughs> I've been a bit lost myself. Swifty, you had quite an impact on my style of humour recently. Love you. Kissy emoji. Ooh, look at you. My condolences. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't imagine it was a positive impact. You've got, you've got a style of humour. I have no style. I have no grace. Brian Callahan says, Please stop saying asswife phonetically. <laughs> it sounds like you're saying asswife. Now, here's the secret, Brian. <laughs> we know. <laughs> That's why we do it. Oh, is that what it sounds like? Oh, no. (laughs) What a terrible coincidence. God King Rice says, any theories on... (laughs) We were just playing chicken. Who poisoned... Who poisoned Arion Brightflame's wildfire? I'm pretty sure Arion Brightflame did that. It's poison. It is poison. Wildfire is not food. 
I don't think. Well, okay. I I I enjoy what you're putting out here, though, God King, because you're saying that <laughs> the prophecy dictated that Arion would have been born as a dragon, but clearly, since he was yeah, not reborn as a dragon, it. yeah, must have been Daron. I love the idea that if you do something stupid and you die, it's the maester's fault. Well, yeah, it's like you stick a stick in your bicycle wheel and blame it on. Oh, I don't know. Piant pre. Like, that's... It's the same as Lodos. When that brave priest of the drowned god Lodos yeah. walked into the sea and died, he must have been poisoned by the maesters because yeah. he said he was going to come back. And, and he didn't. You know, yeah. When plans don't work out, it's always because someone was maliciously acting against you. When I failed my exams and stubbed my toe, I blame the maesters. So you should have. I, I really do feel like conspiracy theories in this work of fiction, like studying fictional conspiracy theories in this work of fiction, is an interesting way to think about conspiracy theories in the real world. I mean, there are, you know, differences between fiction and reality. <laughs> conspiracy... <laughs> a controversial... On that one. <laughs> controversial statement. Um, like, conspiracies are more likely in the fiction, I think, because you can, like, just ignore plausibility and just have wacky things happen um, All right. well there are more there are different and sort of unsettled rules of plausibility like a lot of the theorizing that we engage in is sort of debating the merits of what is plausible and what is not and it's also about what makes narrative and sense and i think that is sort of what happens in real life conspiracy theorizing as well as people arguing about what is plausible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but uh, yeah, I feel like part of the lesson is that like when we theorize about Song of Ice and Fire theory conspiracies, we're thinking about like what conspiracy makes the most narrative sense. Like mm. what conspiracy mm. theory makes narrative sense for our fav- favorite characters and themes, and that makes sense in a work of fiction. But in we're reality, we're also trying to psychoanalyze an author. Yeah, yeah. Reality yeah. doesn't have an author. Exactly. Reality doesn't have an author. Reality doesn't have narrative sense. Reality doesn't do things for main characters over other characters. And that's, like, where the differences lie, I guess. I don't know. And so reality... What what appear to be conspiracy theories is usually just chaotic forces acting in their own interest, right? And I think that's sort of what's beautiful about A Song of Ice and Fire is that George has kind of captured that sense of chaotic Brownian motion <laughs> amongst narrative threads where it really is just each person trying to do the thing that's best for them regardless of how it affects you know, the main character. But Except he yeah. does craft an arc for that character, eventually. Yeah, it's kind of weird, because, like, Arsewife is meant to be, like, a slightly You more... said that one more like Arsewife <laughs> than usual. Oh, I was actually talking about my wife's ass <laughs> that time. <laughs> Sorry, did you think I oh, meant I a song of like, and you fire? have a separate boob wife and Arsewife. Like, a salt wife and a stone wife. It's a complicated arrangement, for sure. <laughs> um, but a song of ice and fire tries to be more of a realistic fantasy series which right away is a funny contradiction like like a song of ice fire gets points for being more realistic in a lot of people's eyes like you know in violence sometimes people die and some people have trauma and some people make mistakes and and dragons only have two legs exactly right it's a very weird like mishmash of like realism and fantasy and at a certain point if you're making your fantasy ultra ultra realistic what's even the point like watch a documentary my dude like, I don't know, it's just a funny thing. Like, I, I think that George has to be really careful with how much realism he puts into fantasy. In the same way that, like, George talks in interviews about how he, he tries to be really careful with how much magic he puts into yeah. his story. I mean, in the long, long ago, he didn't even want to put dragons in. Yeah, yeah. He had to be convinced, that fought tooth and nail. Yeah. Um. Thank you, Luke, who says you are saving my day. No worries. Thank you, Laden License, who says, Hi guys, what do you think? Would Robert's Rebellion take place if Rhaegar hadn't kidnapped Lyanna? Thanks for your podcast. I think something would have happened. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I think something would have happened, but like not the same thing and like not in the same way. Because much as we just talked about the impracticality of um, all-encompassing conspiracy theories... There was a crafted alliance between the Starks, Arons, Baratheons, and Tullys yeah. that was going to do something at some point, or just like continue being a block that sort of stands up as um, on its own against Targaryen rule. Not to mention there was Rhaegar versus Aerys yeah. going on at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sort of the tragedy is that if if Rhaegar's plan to reform 
Ares hadn't been so masterfully foiled by Rhaegar <laughs> stealing <laughs> Lyanna. If Rhaegar hadn't outsmarted Rhaegar like that, then Rhaegar might have succeeded. And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling me. I, I, yeah, I, I, I think that Rhaegar did a, did a big oopsie when he ran off with Lyanna. Like, like, couldn't his prophecy romance with Lyanna wait, wait until five after he's seconds? become king? <laughs> like, 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 just do one thing at a time, my dude. Like, overthrow yeah. the government or st- cheat on your wife with a teenager. Like, pick a lane. I don't know. There are plenty of people in real life who have managed to juggle those plates. He 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 was he's a prince. He he should have been a little bit responsible, and a husband to Elia. No, but he's the prophesied hero. He's supposed to do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah, I, I think that's the point. Like 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 the point is that Rhaegar was was brain fuggled by prophecy. It's because completely delusional. All so many of George's stories, even before A Song of Ice and Fire, are about how dreams mislead us. And Am that's... I supposed to think that Rhaegar is the one character who's right? About, yeah. about all of this. Exactly, exactly. Like, the moral of A Song of Ice and Fire is not going to be dreams are totally correct and awesome. And, and well, all right, all those other guys were wrong about their prophecies, but, but this one right. guy, this one person is completely correct about all the prophecies and they're going to save the day. No, that's not going to be what happens. The prophecies are always a double-edged sword. It always gets subverted in a weird way. Nah, but not this time, though. <laughs> yeah, right? And so, like, I, I am a big fan of, like, the, you know, Jon Snow's is all high, and Jon Snow will defeat the White Walkers, and Jon Snow will kill Nissa, Nissa, Daenerys. Like, I am a big fan of that stuff, but I think that it, it will all be contextualized in a way that makes it um, surprising and subversive and sad, and Jon will not be happy about it, and Jon will not get to be king and have babies, and, you know, it's going to be... All those things he dreamt of in the first book won't come to pass. Why would they? If he marries Val, it'll only be as a white... Oh well. Oh well, oh well, oh well. Doesn't oh well. matter, had sex. <laughs> Doesn't matter. All right. Tony Manic says Night's Watch crowned John thinking act of God, others avenge Night's King. I, l- I love it when people. You gotta send more money than that if you wanna convey an idea with that much complexity. Like, like there's a character limit on the super chat. Night's Watch. Crown John thinking, thinking oh I, hang on that it's an act of God and the others avenge the Night's King I people so... people are just gonna start like super chatting wingdings at us for <laughs> us to yeah sorry Tony Manic uh, besides my tinfoil your content is awesome oh, thank you thank Tony you. Jasper says hi go <laughs> and sh- Thanks for the instant classic of a stream. <laughs> Unrelated question. Favorite movies? Oh, jeez. I haven't watched a movie. You know what movie I did watch recently? Mm. Because you told me to. <laughs> yep. It was um, Talk To Me. I did warn you that it's scary. I, I was so fucking scary. <laughs> was... I, there was a little bit where I actually could not watch. Yeah. I, I had to skip a bit. Yeah. No, they're, they're, that is an upsetting movie. There are some traumatic moments yeah. in that movie. But it's a good movie, it was right? It's good. well made. I really liked it. I, I I really liked how like I, I feel like all the really good horror movies find a way to make it about sort of like scary monsters but also make it about human drama and trauma and I feel like that movie did a spectacular job of like yeah. linking those things. Yeah. It made like and really in far more subtle ways than it would first appear. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that movie sort of bears analysis. Like I feel like you can sort of think about what represents what with the different sort of boogans and the different acts and who's in control of what situation and i I love how even like the side characters in that movie have stuff going on absolutely like i don't don't think we should spoil it but like there's there's interesting like relationship dynamics and layers with even the minor characters that i I thought made that movie super interesting a lot conveyed in a very short amount of time that is mostly spent focused on two characters yeah 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 do you think we should attempt to do, like, a movie discussion? I, I would like to talk um, at length with you about that movie. I don't know if it has to be live-streamed, but, yeah, you know, we might as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I enjoyed that movie a lot. Um, other favourite movies? Uh, yeah. Um, in terms of horror, like, Hereditary is amazing. Midsummer's pretty cool. I don't watch much horror, m- really, at all. <laughs> Speaking of movies, I enjoy Moon. 
Moon. Moon is cool. I've got a weird fondness for the Royal Tenenbaums. Oh, yeah? And Romeo plus Juliet by Baz Luhrmann. I like that movie a lot, too. It's just so much fun. Lots of fun. It just looks so great and Baz Luhrmann's so a very fun director. Yeah. If nothing else. But much else. Um, I don't know. My favourite movies, it's so easy and cliched, but, like, I mean, of course it is. It's a Lord of the Rings trilogy. I'm yeah. sorry. Sorry, yeah. everyone. It's yeah. a Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah. Absolutely. The Matrix? That's a good film. It's a very fucking good movie. It's a very good film. <laughs> it's exceptionally good. Yeah. No. I- I'm starting to think that James Cameron has a pretty good handle on this whole directing business. Mm. So, uh, Avatar... You heard of a little Avatar... film called uh, Titanic? Avatar 2, The Way of Damp Smurfs Boogaloo? I did not watch that movie. Those inundated Smurfs. Yeah, I don't know anyone who's waterlogged. Who's waterlogged. <laughs> Avatar three, Gargamel strikes back. <laughs> Avatar four, Papa Smurf smurfs himself. <laughs> Pup- <laughs> Avatar <laughs> five, <laughs> uh, Smurfettes re-smurfing. <laughs> the new. Uh, I don't know enough Smurf lore. <laughs> <laughs> No, I and I watched the Smurfs movie with um oh god who was it ah oh, it was not very good is this a recent Smurf movie no it was like ten years ago <laughs> um my goodness Neil Patrick Harris fucking hell I I never know why they get like famous celebrities to voice like I'm assuming they didn't like no he wasn't a voice he was a human he was in, in it. the movie yeah. was he in Blueface no he was a human character. What, human Neil Patrick Harris? Yes, but... in the Smurfs movie. Or at least I think so. H- have you seen Detective Pikachu? I haven't. It seems like exactly the sort of movie I would have seen, but I haven't. Why, why aren't we doing a Detective Pikachu review Why are we doing now? this? My God. Uh, yeah, well, those are our favourite movies. Thank <laughs> you, <Jasper>. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, uh, Kevin the Golden, who says, Will we ever get deleted scenes from Hot D? We can act some out for you right now if you want. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, I think you'd need a higher Patreon tier for that. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, well, there are a bunch of deleted scenes, aren't there? So we've heard. So we've heard. It's it's always annoying. Like, like for Dune as well, there's a bunch of um, people who have sort of inside information about deleted scenes and stuff. And I wish I had access yeah. to that inside information because I would love to... Uh, know about things and talk about things because that's kind of my job. So when I can't know the things, it's frustrating. Yep. I like knowing things. I love knowing things. It's one of my favourite things to know. Something Vaguely Funny says, Glimbus, give us more music analysis. It rules. All right. So at the start of Strawberry Fields... <laughs> no, we're not <laughs> doing it now. Um, yes. Yes. So as I understand, <laughs> it starts with A, proceeds to B, and continues all the way to G. Is oh, that you correct? You skipped a few, a few things along the way there, but that's essentially the, the gist of it. All right. You'll, you'll tell me the rest later. <laughs> What's this super chat? Um, Old Swift Stone writes from, I assume, the Siege Grounds, if you'll remember from our last endeavour. <laughs> um, Father, please. We lack food and the peasants are revolting. You can say that again. <laughs> um, last night I sent Castellan Glimbert to inspect our wares and when returning from the cellar, he had only a few words to say. <laughs> it's beans. Oh my gosh, is Glimbert one of your bastard sons? Uh, no, unrelated, completely unrelated, but definitely knows his beans. So, so last I remember, um, my bastard children were warring in the Riverlands, is that correct? Something along those lines, yeah. Yeah, well look, Old Driftstone, um, the paternity test was inconclusive. Um, it sounds like you got it covered with the beans. Beans are the healthful fruit. Beans and... are, like, some of the best food, like, pound for pound. Like, they're so calorifically, they're, they're nutritiously wonderful. Enjoy your beans. Enjoy your beans. I mean, save some for me, Old Shrift Stone. <laughs> don't, don't eat them all in one night. Imagine that, you're right to your son on the battlefield. Sounds good. Don't eat them all at once. <laughs> Ah, uh, and here is uh, a super chat from your bastard child. Um, it, oh no, not not glider sand. Um, 
Father, I'm running away with swifty flowers and you cannot stop me. Well, <laughs> honestly, let love be love. Let a thousand blossoms bloom for all I'm concerned. Aren't they technically cousins? How would that be? Uh, well, it, the family tree is getting increasingly complicated. I mean, they could be cousins if they want, but I don't really see how that <laughs> contributes to the narrative. What is the name of two bastards who... I mean, I mean, if a bastard has a child, does the child have the bastard name? I think it's incredibly contextual. Hmm. And, like, in the case of someone like Renifer Longwaters, who keeps coming up today... Oh, when are we doing our <laughs> Renifer Longwaters analysis live stream? Four-hour theory stream about Renifer Longwaters. Mm. Part one. Um, you know, he just made up his... Well, somewhere along his family tree, someone made up that, you know what, we've been bastards for so long, we're Longwaters. They just unbastard themselves. Well, or rather, like, made a name out of being bastards. I don't know. What you can do with that. Because, I mean, it, it's funny. Like, the bastard name is seen as a bad thing, but At least it's, it's better name. than having no yeah. name. Because yeah. you only get the bastard name if you're the child of a highborn, right? So, having a bastard name is better than no name. So, I reckon inheriting a bastard name would be a thing that people want. Well. Maybe it's a privilege that you don't get to have all the time. Sounds like before too long, we'll be co-grandfathers. Sounds like it. That's going to be an uncomfortable wedding dinner. Thank you, Rezguan Abana, who says, Hi, Globus and Control-Alt-Delete. Control-Alt-Delete. Hi, Shaft and Glimbino, says Ragnar Crofts, who says, Theory time. Theory time. The legend of Jin Ali... Kaltana. ...killed Craster, preventing more White Walkers from being born. It's Hero. fucking legend. So could Kaltana be Azora High, tempering his blade in Nissa Nissa? I don't think that Kaltana loved Craster. Mm. It it was it was a real uh it was you a real cooking. frenemies situation if it was. Yeah. I mean there was probably salt and smoke in Craster's keep Absolutely. from the fire and the pork. The salty sausage, remember Craster's rock hard sausage? I don't recall Craster's rock hard sausage. You, you I think I I think I suppressed that particular <laughs> memory. No, no, it's a salty rock hard sausage and it comes up quite a few times. <laughs> <laughs> At least it wasn't fat and pink. Um, yeah, I mean, look, every time someone kills someone, it's not, like, I hate to say this, but not every time that someone <laughs> kills someone is it necessarily a Zora High and Nissa Nissa. What do you mean? But I mean, but I mean, you make a point that k killing Craster is an absolute hero move. I mean, the, you know, the Night's Watch was too, um, real politic and too Machiavellian. Well, I, I you know, the, the Night's Watch was morally lazy in not killing Craster. Mm. Or rather, they might have seen some benefit in it but probably not as good as I, not letting him do that yeah and that's why i don't like it that in the game of thrones tv show season four john goes and kills the night's watch mutineers which is sort of like ending the legacy of craster yeah. you know like it's it's cause... that's right because rast was sacrificing craster's last son like he was continuing craster's job of placating the white walkers and rast and carl like continued to like abuse craster's wife yeah, so like keeping up his good work yeah they continued the legacy the evil legacy of craster and John comes along and kills them all. So it sort of ends that sort of moral quandary of, you know, the Night's Watch used to have this unholy alliance with Craster, um, but John gets to do the hero thing and just... With no, com with no complications. And the reason why I don't like that is that in the books, every other, like, part of Jon Snow's story is about, like, sincere moral dilemma. Like, in Jon Snow's story, there's no easy moral choices. Mm. Everything is endlessly um, complicated, and John second guesses himself. And so the whole plotline of killing the mutineers that has no like moral weight to it or subtlety yeah. to it. It's it's just killing the bad guys that are bad. And I I, I think that sort of misses the point of Jon Snow's story specifically. Not that you've thought about this much. Um, Not yeah, at all. I, I guess what you needed there was some other high up at the Night's Watch being all like, "Well, if you do that, here's the." like carry on effect that will be absolutely bad is safeguarding their secrets the not which was a flimsy excuse to get john up to the crasters yeah the it first was place. it was yeah all the they nights... know our numbers yeah what are yeah. you talking about <laughs> yeah i i mean i mean here's here's an option what if one of the people one of the mutineers at crasters keep was one of john's friends 
What if Gren or mm. Pip was with the mutineers and maybe they weren't abusing the women and maybe they hadn't murdered anybody, but they chose to be at Crash's Keep because they were starving. Because like in the books, at least, yeah. part of the reason why the mutiny happens is that Jill Mormont was a pretty bad leader, like had made some terrible decisions. The Great Ranging was a terrible decision by Jaw. And many of the Night's Watch were killed and many of them were starving so or, or, or were sick as well. Some, some, some were too sick to continue traveling. So what if like Gren or Pip was sick and starving and stayed at Crash's Keep um, but, but they were sort of with the mutineers, and so John was at this point where he's like, I, I feel like I need to kill Gren and Pip because I can't pick and choose which mutineers to kill and which yeah, to not. They are mutineers. They, they are mutineers. The they are Earthbreakers. So yeah. what if John was like forced to kill one of his friends as part of that? Like, like something along those lines would be a lot more fitting with the sort of themes of John's story in the books. There's some unsolicited fan fiction. The best sort. So all I'm saying is that Gren is Nissa Nissa. Not Craster. Sigurd Viscom says, Lads, you missed a major piece of evidence in the last food stream. Eamon's rum marinated corpse is the Kraken wetting the dragon. Do you mean wedding? I think he said wedding. He didn't stutter. <laughs> Resurrection confirmed. Also, Harold Holt memorial stream when? Mm. Mm. Rip. What day did Harold Holt disappear? It, oh, God. Uh, Tuesday, I believe it was. <laughs> Problem is, we don't know uh, what day he um, was executed in the Chinese submarine. Yeah, so that's right. It'd be hard After to... they extracted all the information they needed from him. Through the anal probe. Yeah. Um, Amon's rum marinated corpse is the Kraken wedding the dragon. So yeah, Euron says that the Kraken will wed the dragon. Yeah. And so that's Euron saying he'll oh, marry Daenerys. Oh, it's because there's a brand of rum called Kraken. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It's very good. Well, yeah, do you think that... Um, well, a Amon's corpse has not been, like, resolved at this point, has it? They haven't cremated... It's still on that ship. It's still on the ship. That, that Marwyn ran away with at the end of Feast for Crows. And he's taking that ship to Slaver's Bay. Oh! Yeah. That's a fantastic point. Yeah. I don't know if I've realised that before. Yeah. <laughs> so Daenerys is going to get the opportunity to find her ninth... She's going to drink Amon. <laughs> Oh my god! And just like the wizard suit, yeah, just like Jojen, it's paste. going to awaken her latent telepathic powers. Oh my god! <laughs> Draw <Yes>. that. <laughs> <laughs> so Daenerys will drink Aemon and gain dragon dream powers, and she'll be unstoppable. She'll also be drunk, even more unstoppable. That's truly going to fuel been rum her. Drunk that those demons will keep you going to the end of the world. Well, they sure will. Oh my god, Victarion's gonna stand no chance against a bloodlusted Daenerys Targaryen on Amon rum. <laughs> Old man juice and rum. My god. I mean, I like the idea that, like, they look in the barrel to deal with Amon's corpse and they open up and he's like, oh, it's gone. The corpse is gone. Or he, like, waves to them. Or they, like, follow the, like, rum footsteps. <laughs> and they realize, and that, oh, embarrassing. He, he wasn't dead. <laughs> He jumped ship <laughs> at the Summer Isles. He just swam back to Old Town and he's drinking fearsomely strong cider. Egg! Egg! <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Kai Alexander says, Footy hooligan! Tywin is sending me, just imagining him on a train with his mates at 10am already drunk for a 5pm kickoff, ruining the day for literally everyone else on the train. Chef's kiss. Yeah, that sounds like him. That's the thing. Like, you know, like like Jamie and and Tig and um Gary and Lannister. I mean, Gary and was fun and Tywin must have had some of those fun genes, you know? He has a fun facial hair sort <laughs> of. Tywin must know how to have yeah, fun. He must I... have had fun in Shatea's brothel at least. Uh, why else go there? It's not for business. And what is footy hooliganism if not like medieval battle? enthusiasm start the damn joust wouldn't it, be... it really is the same like cultural um setting yeah so if tywin is an enjoyer of battles maybe he would be an enjoyer of football if he could just let go of his daddy issues for one minute thanks for the super chat from kpv who says start making first law content Have you read the first law i've not read By the first joe law. abercrombie what is the first it's law a pretty decent fantasy series yeah yeah, what it, what it, what is setting. the law? The law? Oh, you can't have to read it to find out. I'm not telling you that. Ugh. That's need to know knowledge. Ugh. Um, That's pretty, it's quite good. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I sort of feel like it makes the most sense to cover shows that, to cover series that have a TV show as well as a book series. Just you for know? like broad appeal on the platform where. Yeah, if you cover like a book series that's like a decade old, you know, that's not like current, you know, less people are likely to be interested. Yeah, which is a shame. But you know, you can pick up obscure stuff as well. Um, like if I knew that. When that Alt Shift X toss bag went and made a video about a you know piece of Turkish sci-fi ephemera, that turned out to be popular. So you can make series about all sorts of things. Yeah. I guess. Thanks for the super chat from Belandra. Damn, I Swift was going to Sand. release my All Tomorrow's video just one day after, but he had to swoop in and. Oh, I think I I saw a tweet from Trey the Explainer. Really? Who was, <laughs> yes. Who said that? Trey the Explainer was like, like, oh, I was literally, damn, oh like, I've known about All Tomorrow's for years, and I, I, I could have Honestly, made a video about All Tomorrow's. If you had said anyone except Trey the Explainer, <laughs> I would right? not have believed you. Yeah, no, Trey the Explainer is the only person yeah. <laughs> who could plausibly have been about to make an All oh, Tomorrow's video. He should video. still make that. Yeah, I would love to watch a Trey the Explainer All Tomorrow's video. Yeah, absolutely. The <laughs> land <laughs> <laughs> hey dad we've got deep lore man i'm leaving dawn to make the eight wish me luck you don't need luck Belandra. i believe in you you can do it you that this is my bastard daughter right i believe so yeah okay well i believe in you and i think you can achieve your dreams it's a bit perverse that they've taken both your house name and the bastard name that is confusing yeah I, I'm not sure. Maybe it should be hyphenated. <laughs> Double barrel. Hey, potion of swiftness and glumball. Have you two ever considered doing a genital description <laughs> tier list? I know Susan wouldn't be too happy, but it's there's plenty of now. pink musts. I mean, we were discussing Craster's salty, turgid sausage before, but well, um, yeah, it's what he serves to all the men who come by his his playhouse. Don't tell me Vengeance didn't at least once. <laughs> <laughs> partake of Crash's rock hard salty sausage. Bionicle Saurus says, Dear Glyn What a Glenn name! Holy shit! <laughs> that is pretty incredible. Thank you for your utterly delightful content. Question Where does the name The Hermit Spiral come from? <clears throat> That's um, the name of one of our songs off the Materia album, Everything Ends. It's the instrumental track where it's just the, the four of us having a bit of a solo on our own. Um, the Hermit Smile, it's sort of a reference to the, like, text of the preceding song, Two for the Price of One, and the, 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 like, those two songs are basically two parts of the same composition, um, and the character described, god, I'm really going on, the character <laughs> described in Two for the Price of One is the Hermit being referenced, and the Hermit Spiral is him spiralling, right, it's his, like, mental state, oh, but uh, uh, Think about it however you want to think about it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I love how you just followed the trajectory of explaining the meaning of my art, realizing it sounds better if you let people discover their own meaning. Yeah, I mean, like, I have meaning for it, but I don't want that to cloud yours. You just, you just death of the authored yourself. Yeah, very you, good. You just suicided the author. <laughs> Live on stage, just like Eric Andre wanted. It, it, yeah, it is... It is it is really wonderful that here we are analysing someone else's art and then someone asked you to analyse your <laughs> own art. Because yeah, Materia is... That. Materia is Glidus's rock band who no you way. should all go and listen to on Spotify. So there's, a, there's a link in the video so description. True. I think it's so wonderful that and we're getting material law questions. Um, Bionicle Saurus is absolutely correct. The Hermit Spiral is a banger and it's the best track on the album. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Because it doesn't have me singing. Um, Olgjord <laughs> Ludwitschak, sorry about all of that, says, Love listening to you guys think aloud. That is exactly what's happening here. How many calories do you reckon you can get from winds? Any at all? Well, paper is mostly cellulose. <laughs> and cellulose is not digestible by humans. So I don't think it will have any cal calorific content for me. Like, if anything, there could be like some organic compounds in the ink. But I don't know if I'd be able to break that down. It's all just going to come out the other end, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was no hesitation behind that Do answer. people think that I haven't thought about this? Yeah, th this man I have has thought a plan. About this. He's consulted his GP. He's, he's, got a, uh, he's got a plan. I'm concerned. I wouldn't have committed to it if I hadn't done the research. I know that it's 
a terrible idea, but at least I know. D- does George Martin know that he is holding your gastrointestinal system hostage with his refusal to write wins? Does he know the responsibility that he has? I don't know if anyone would have told him. Over your track? We'll go tell him ourselves. Well, George is probably listening, right? Yeah, thanks, George. Thank- Tribune Aquila, um, who we should have stopped to ask about all this, sorry. Um, Defiance of Dusk and Hell was an inside job by Rygar. Hmm. I assume you mean Rhaegar? Unless you mean Ryman Frey, who is secretly <laughs> Rhaegar? <laughs> I, well, I mean, the the, the Defiance of Dusk and Dale... It's a pretty weird part of the story, isn't it? It is pretty weird. I mean, what's it there for? It, it's there to make to give Barris and Selmy a cool thing to do, because yep. Barris rescues Ares. Also a morally weird thing for him to do. Yeah. Like, uh, on the surface, heroic thing, um, Brave Knight breaks into a castle to rescue his king, yeah. but also that king's a monster. Yeah. Well, yeah, honestly, that's ex- explanation enough right there, isn't it? Like, George's whole goddamn thing with Asswife is that, you know, everything is a, like, corruption of the fantasy ideal, you know? Like, you take some kind of heroic trope and you turn it on its head and make it morally like, complicated. Who is a more straightforward fantasy trope than Barristan Selmy? Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, like, Barristan hasn't reflected on the Defiance of Dustin I really Dale. enjoy that about Barristan, is how uncritical he is of his situation in life. Yeah, I, I mean, he, he sort of starts reflecting mm. reluctantly as <laughs> A Dance of Dragons goes on. He's like, oh, I guess I'll think about it. Like, he would really like to be really straightforward, but like, he's the Queen's Guard and he hasn't got a Queen. And he doesn't know who the enemy is and he's a knight and he hasn't got a clear, you know. Yeah, so the, for the first time he's having to really think about what's going on here. They pay me to fight, not read. Yeah. Bilbo Silius Zwackle Baggins says, Can it be? Indeed. It's my favourite conjoined twin aristocrat, Lord Schweilez of Glimbington Shire. May you crush any bastard son that rises against That's you. That's the support we needed. I felt like that was the right voice for Bilbo Silius Zwackle Baggins. I like how you committed to saying it a second time. <laughs> it's honestly fun, just uh, just like a, a tongue twister challenge to say all of Bilbo these. Bilbo Silius Zwackle Baggins. Oh, that's easy. Try harder next time. Thanks, Brian Callahan, who says Euron must be a beat because Danny kind of forgot about the iron beat. I'm just going to leave now, <laughs> if that's okay. Well, Tom will outlaw the iron beat, so don't you worry. <laughs> it will sink. Uh, Belanda Swift Sand is back again to say um, that Jack and Hagar farts perfume. Hmm. Thank you. Well, well here's Belandra. the thing. Here's the thing. The faceless men can change their faces. And if I remember rightly in the books, it, it says that they also change, like, their height and their appearance and, like, all of the specifics of... of I'd love to see how that works. Of, of how they appear. I mean, I assume that it works like a glamour, which is, like, meant yeah. to be a sort of a psychological Illusion. suggestion. So, like, you know, I, I assume someone doesn't actually change their mass or anything or their weight. It but just Arya just their... rips off a face mask. And yeah. suddenly becomes two feet shorter and grows boobs. Well, that's what the HBO uh, makeup department decided to do. But in the books, it's more of like a subtle psychological suggestion Crazy. type thing that does involve actually dressing up as a certain person. Can't as wait well. to see how this gets to Jack and the Gar farting perfume. Well, I, well, what I'm leading up to is that if it can change your appearance and it can change, I guess, how you, your voice sounds, can it also change your olfactory emissions? Does it change how you smell? Does it change how you fart? Hmm. Do you, do you think that you could imitate another person's farts? If you given like... enough practice, yeah. 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 Cuz I mean, I think that everyone's fart has a fingerprint, you know, like a unique a fart print. A, a fart print. A sort of a, a the timbre is <laughs> distinct with each now, person. I don't know if I could imitate the smell of mm. someone's fart, but I mm. think you could actually workshop the sound. Mm. No, I think you absolutely could. I, I, I mean, the I imagine the smell is mostly a function of like your gut flora, right? And there are studies suggesting that gut flora can impact your like psychological well-being and your psychological behavior and stuff. So like, if your gut can affect your mind, surely your mind can affect your gut. I mean, anxiety is connected to gut stuff. So surely by like, you know, altering your psychological state. You could alter your... Or you could just eat a bunch of iron beets, I suppose. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm just brainstorming here. Oh, is that what's happening? (laughs) (laughs) You seem (laughs) sceptical. 
No, interesting line of thought. <laughs> Can you draw that? <laughs> I, I, I could fart it. All right. Thank you, Casper Bergeron, who says, Hi, Glyceratops and Alt Shipwreck. Fantastic. Finally, I made it to one of your lives. I started reading the books at the start of this year, and I love it. I just want to thank you both for reviving my love for God. Thank you for saying that. That's wonderful. Um, Michelle M says, Sup, fellas. Love your stuff. <laughs> one Night in Bravo slaps. Thank you. The Tyrion rap is a banger. Thank you. Um, what are the odds Rhaenyra and Alicent run off together at the end of House of the Dragon and get married? If this were an original story that mm. HBO were developing completely independent of anything else, mm. I'd High. put like, yeah, 35% odds on that, mm. which is relatively high for all of the outcomes that could happen. However, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Yeah, I think a Hot D does a really great job of giving us like the tragedy of the personal relationship with Alicent and Rhaenyra, which like, you know, growing up together and having affection for each other and then sort of tragically being torn apart by some bad decisions and some political forces. Um, but George did not write that when he wrote Fire and Blood no. because he wrote Alicent to be a bunch older than Rhaenyra and he didn't really get into their relationship all that much. There's like one sentence saying that they were fond of each other and that's it. Um, so I think that the they the wonderful like relationship drama in Hot D season one is not necessarily served by the actual plot details that happen later, which is basically a bloodbath. I, I mean like I, I guess they can just have a whole bunch of pathos, you know, like we're just going to feel sad about how much they're murdering each other because we know that they still loved each other once. But it's like, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think that Hot D has gone beyond like the depth of the Fire and Blood chapter because it's one chapter. It's like 15 pages is the entirety of Hot D season one. So it's like, I, I almost think that they've kind of bamboozled themselves because they made, they made Hot D season yeah. one too good, like <clears throat> better than Fire and Blood deserves. To the point where the ending, I don't know if it'll even work um, as well. Really, most of what there is to look forward to is cool dragon fights. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, yeah, they've, they've made this Alicent Rhaenyra relationship sort of the cornerstone of the, you know, series emotion. And knowing what happens, it'll be interesting to see how they can maneuver more of that into the story yeah. as it plays out. I'm, I, they'll, I'm sure they'll find a way... Yeah. It might not be tactful. I hope it is. Yeah. Yeah, I guess our point is that, like, they're going to have to invent a bunch of material to sort of keep that human drama element alive in between the dragon fights. Especially because the book is basically just a historical recounting of things that happened rather than a narrative, emotional story. Yeah. I, I think that they sort of have to centre it on the characters in a way that might mean that we don't get all the battles. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Honestly, I know a lot of people engage with Fire and Blood completely differently to how I'm about to describe, but a lot of the battles described just sort of, like, it's another battle. And, like, I take stock of what happened by the end of it and, like, how it changes the landscape of the war, but I'm, like, okay, it's another battle. Yeah. I've seen battles. Yeah. And, and I mean, there's, there's good ways to adapt battles to screen and there's bad ways. Um, no way. I mean, if they... I guess my point is, it's going to be a really big challenge to try and make all of the battles in Hot D feel different. Um, and yeah, I, I think that inevitably, like, just removing some of the battles or not showing some of the battles... Is, Probably a prudent choice. Yeah. I, I mean, George Martin in an interview was talking about how, you know, part of his decision making was that, you know, Tyrion's battle... Like, in book one, there's three battles and we get a different kind of perspective on each one. Tyrion's battle on the Green Fork, we see from his perspective... The Battle of the Whispering Wood, Catelyn is just, like, nearby when yeah. it happens. And then the Battle of the Camps or whatever the other battle is, like, we only hear, like, reported to us. So, like, we get these three completely different kinds of perspectives on each battle. It's not like we just put a POV character on the front lines of each battle. That'd be too repetitive. And I think, you know, the Game of Thrones show um, kind of felt like that sometimes with their battles. Like, I mean, like, the, the goddamn Battle of Fire in... Season six, where Daenerys burns all the slavers, was like that wasn't even a battle. Not a battle. That was just Daenerys flying around and she shows up and burns the plot so she can go elsewhere. She burns the Miranese knot like the Gordian knot. Yeah, it's just I don't know. 
I agree. It, hot, hot, do, the, hot do season two, three, four is going to be really challenging. And I, after hot do season one, I've got, I like, I'm really impressed by what they did. And I think Ryan Condal is like really good hands with the story to be in. But um, yeah, God, we'll see how it goes. Best of luck. Best of luck. Frederick says, Schwifto, I watched The Good Place because of your Doors video. Great show, great video. And it was one of the best shows I've watched. Thanks for the indirect recommendation, and thank you both for the videos and streams. Oh, good. Yeah, thanks. That Doors video is a little bit special to me, so I'm I, really... It's one, of my, it's one of my favorites that you've ever done. Yeah, thanks. Glad you guys like it. And The Good Place is a really cool show. I've got, I've got like... I've got like mixed feelings about the ending of The Good Place, which mm. I think is why I made The Doors video. <laughs> uh, but yeah. How do you feel overall about the ending of BoJack? Um, I haven't thought about it too much since I watched it. Yeah, well, it's quite open-ended, isn't it? Yeah. Which I, I think I like that rather than something more definitive. Yeah, I, I think that when I was younger, when I was younger, when I, when I was reading and watching stuff, I, I felt frustrated that <laughs> these the sort of deep stories that tried to engage with the meaning of life didn't have an answer at the end of them <laughs> like what I, do you mean you didn't tell me the answer to the meaning exactly of life? it felt like lazy or something it's like it felt like a well, tease go on, tell me what it is because like there are some books that do try to give you an answer like what is the correct perspective for the hero to have and what is the correct way to think about the universe but but you know of course like when you grow older you you sort of realize that any story or piece of art that tries to give you an answer will always feel insufficient and, and what art should do is try to guide you to your own answer, or at least to your own perspective on possible answers through your experience of the story. Because any art that tries to give you the answer is always going to feel reductive or, or, or just unsatisfying. So, Do you ever get comments saying that you'd make a great English teacher? <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't even ask. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat from Pablo. Who says, this one goes to Joe Mormont, who was poisoned by the maesters. R.I.P. We'll Venmo him. <laughs> Pull one out for it. <laughs> we'll send him the five bucks. Mars Santos says, I love all your lives and the discussions, even the unhinged one. Show me a hinged discussion that we've had. <laughs> what is the most hinged discussion that we've had? I think it, we're I, well I'm, off. I'm really struggling. <laughs> we're well off the hinges. No one's holding the door. Um, Noah Bathgate says, Hey, Sugar Glider, what do you think about the theory that Dale knows about Nancy's affair with John Redcorn? I, mm, I'm in two minds about it, and they're the two you'd expect. Um, one likes it and one doesn't. I think it sort of dilutes the concept of Dale Gribble if he knows and just plays along with it. <laughs> oh, this is King of the Hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just completely lost for a moment there. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of King of the Hill, but yeah, I, 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 that relationship is cool because it's like the... Um... It's like the guy who speaks incomprehensibly, his wife is having sex with like the Native American no, guy. No, you're right? thinking of Boomhauer. Oh, am Dale I? Gribble is the conspiracy theorist. Right, right, that guy. Who's always talking about how there are these crazy global plots to undermine his freedom and liberty or whatever. In the meantime, he's completely blind to the fact that his wife is having an incredibly obvious affair yeah. with the one other person right. in his life. Um, and that his son is very clearly John Redcord's son. I think it sort of dilutes the character um, for Dale to be aware of it. I think it's sort of beautiful that he's blissfully unaware. Um, although I, I, I can see why it's compelling, because like Dale being aware and loving... God, I'm blanking on the kid's name. Um, loving his son regardless is sort of beautiful in that, like folksy texan way you know <laughs> I, I i don't know this show well but it's the same as tywin lannister knowing about jamie and says he's incest, it's exactly right? the same thing it's the yes. same thing like on some level these men must have at least a suspicion but that possibility oh, no, is just no, too Dale upsetting Gribble's for them. really dumb and yeah okay. and, and not very perceptive so yeah. it is very plausible that he has no idea Oh, yeah. That it's never even crossed his mind. In fact, I think someone even suggests it to him in an episode. And he's like, nah, no way. John Redcorn's my best friend. He would never do that. Mm. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. K King of the Hill, like from the little love scene, it, it really manages to capture like really like just poignant <laughs> it's human a great show. It moments. It really is. As, as well as being so silly. 
Thanks for the super chat from Bonus Stone Studios TM. <laughs> <laughs> he says, "Why no children of bastards with names Snow or Flowers or something?" I Every character we meet with a surname like that is a bastard themselves. What are the children of bastards called? Yeah, we were discussing that before, mm. weren't we? I, I think the fact that we haven't seen any people with bastard names who are... Themselves the children of bastards. Yeah, like, that just must not be how it works. Like, maybe you just don't get a name if you're the child of a bastard. I mean, do you think it... I mean... I mean if you were the bastard son of a bastard, you'd have to get a bastard name. Well, if you were still recognised as highborn, because if you're a lowborn bastard, then what does it matter? Well, there is a significance of like acknowledged bastards yeah. and unacknowledged bastards as well, isn't it? Does Walder Rivers have any children? Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know. It might be something. I mean, it's probably something that's just sort of based on context, you know, situation to situation. There's no central authority of bastard nomenclature in Westeros, <laughs> is there? Yeah, that's the thing when people come up with, you know, their interpretation of the quote-unquote rules. Yeah, I mean, like George has said, that the rules of, like, who gets to be king, the rules of succession it's, and inheritance... Like whoever is the king. ...inconsistent. So there's no way that the bastard naming system is consistent. As CTP Grey so eloquently put it, bigger army diplomacy... Mm. Is what settles who is the king. Mm. Hi, Globar and Swiftex, says Big Al. Thanks, Big Al. How do you think John and Danny will hook up in the books? On a boat. Boat sex. With the amount of book left to go, how does George not rush it like the show? Peace and love from Canada. Yeah, let, let, let me let you in on a hot fact right now. Let me <laughs> come, in, come in close. Here's the thing. George Martin originally intended A Song of Ice and Fire to be three books long. Mm -hmm. Then he wrote yep. one or yep. two, and then he realized, oh, wait, I might have to add another book. Okay, I might four have books. To add it's four books, yep. but that yep. that's it. Then he wrote another book, and then he realized, oh, wait, oh, wait, it's actually going to have to be five books. Five books, it's okay. Gonna, all right, but yep. that's yep. that's all. Five books. All right, but then he wrote another book, and then he was like, oh, you know what, it's actually, oh, I think it might actually have to be six books. Six books? It might, be, it might be six. Nice round six. Even number, six. And then he wrote another book. And you know what happened then? Can you guess what happened then? You know what, fellas? I'm feeling a seventh <laughs> book. <laughs> but no more. That's what he's saying now. Yeah. He's saying no more. It'll be seven. He'll do wins, then a dream of spring, and then it'll be and done. And then 12 Duncan egg novellas. So what... <laughs> so what do you think of the chances that George finishes the winds of winter? And you know what he's going to say? <laughs> I think there is <sighs> no chance that George finishes A Song of Ice and Fire in two if, books. If there are only two books left, they are like three-part books where each of those parts are the size of the Storm of Swords, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you could do it in terms of like word count. I think that the word count to finish A Song of Ice and Fire is going to be a lot longer than like two Storm of Swordses, if that's a good unit of measurement. Yep, yep. I'm in agreement with you there. How but do you have an actual approach to this question? How John and Danny will hook up? Reg like, no, not thinking about how much book is left. Yeah, well, it's a good question. I, I think that John's arc has been about him putting aside his personal desires for the sake of his duty and the greater good. And I think that him being resurrected will change him. And I think that as indicated by his reaction to Ramsay's letter, uh, he's going to turn towards taking what he wants and following his desires. And I think that Danny will be um, a desire for him. Um, and I think she will also be a political force. And I think he'll realize that, hey, dragons would be pretty good for killing the White Walkers. So I guess in that sense, it, it, it's sort of an alignment of personal desire and political... What if um, it's like a purely political match and they actually don't like each other? <laughs> yeah, that's a really interesting idea, honestly. Why, is, why does everyone assume that they're going to like each other? I mean, Danny sees a blue winter rose growing from a wall oh, of ice, filling the air with sweetness. And I don't think she's talking about his clone. Eh. Um, and Dario doesn't seem likely to survive the winds of winter. Nah, he'll be in charge of Marine by the end of the book. <laughs> Uh, Commissioner, Grand Governor, <laughs> Dario Naharis, Arbiter of Justice and Prudent Economic Development. That's him. Yeah, oh, uh, Yeah. look, I think it's a really good question. I, I mean, Daenerys likes um, bad boys. Uh, could John be enough of a bad boy for Daenerys? I really think he could be by the time that she gets there. Here, here's the thing. I, I think that... He, she's also into zombies. Is she into zombies? Well, she has a dream about a zombie 
with an ice stick. So. Uh yeah, true. Yeah, well, yeah, that, that's funny. Like, uh, like that, that dream was probably sent to her, though, so I don't know. Well, yeah, Daenerys has a dream of a ice cold phallus. Oh, um, maybe her desire for John would be, you know, in, incepted in her. Oh God! By, by someone invading her mind. Sorry for Ooh. that thought, but. You know, yeah, I haven't thought it's that. All, but it's that, all on the cards. That is exactly the sort of shit that George Martin would pull, honestly. Bran invades Daenerys' mind to make her like Jon so, oh. so that they get married, so that she can defeat the others. It's like the worst, like, Cupid rom-com, like, nightmare of yeah. all time. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, honestly, nothing's off the table. Because, like, J- Jon at this point is a zombie. And and I quite like the idea of him having like white hair and you know. And are we still pretending that um that Daenerys isn't a zombie? And also Daenerys, <laughs> Daenerys. Okay, yeah, Daenerys is a fire white died at the end of book one. But uh, but also the fact that Daenerys is Jon's aunt adds some level of weirdness, surely. And I mean, and you know, obviously, I mean, there is also the political thing of they have competing claims, and if they marry, they unite their claims. I love how the show dealt with that issue by saying, Nah, 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 nah it just won't work. Nah. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah. Oh boy. Fucking brilliant. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah I th- there's a lot of open questions. Best season ever. There we Best go. Best season ever. <laughs> uh, I'm so happy about that soundboard. I think that John and Danny, you're right. There are a lot of political reasons for them to be together and it's almost weird that they would desire what is also politically expedient. So I, I guess part of it is Daenerys doesn't want to cede power to John. Yeah. You know? And, I, and, and, I don't, and he might be at a point where he wants power. I think that John wants to be the ruler of Winterfell. I don't think John wants to rule King's Landing. I mean, he's never expressed anything of the sort. But I mean, I guess when John finds out that he's a Targaryen, that might change everything. That might heighten his ambitions. Yeah. And and also, like, I, I think there's a high chance of like brain fugglery for John um, when he like spends time in Ghost. And his soul is in Ghost and he's disconnected from his body. I think he's going to get visions from Bloodraven and from Bran and maybe from beyond. And I think that's going to alter him. Uh, I mean, I mean, Daenerys has those visions of the Gemstone Emperors, which I know you love talking about. It's fine. She sees the, the people with opal eyes and tourmaline eyes and swords of pale fire. And, and I think that sort of connects to the precursors of the Valyrians and the whole sort of prophetic background, the mythic background to all of this. And that might sort of, you know, if John has a similar experience, he might heighten his ambitions a bit and he might become more of a mythic figure himself. And then he might say, hell, like, why not rule the realm? And and maybe John's ending will be more about, okay, like, I heightened my ambitions too high. Maybe I should come back to being, you know, I'm I'm a Stark. I was raised by Ned Stark. Because that, cause that's, you know... John is Ned Stark's son. For all intents and purposes, in all the ways that matter, John is Ned Stark's son. So I don't think the moral of John's story is going to be blood matters and he's a Targaryen and he's the king and that's what matters. I don't think John embracing his Targaryen identity will be his end point. I think that might be something that he passes through. He might have a phase where he's like, ooh, I'm a Targaryen prince, that's really cool. But I don't think that'll be like the conclusion. I think the conclusion for John will be more about his Stark identity and more about sacrificing himself for the greater good. And maybe the show kind of does resonate with that, like in theory. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, well, well, the show, as as ever, it sort of left... Now he returns to the North and he gives up his claim such that life can go on and it's sort of a sacrifice because he's exiled forever, or at least we're led to believe that he is. As always, the, the show gave us, like, the, the main points, but none of the context that made it meaningful. Mm. Um, well, it's all we've got. It's all we've got until George releases that final seventh book. The last time that he's lengthened the number of books in the trilogy. The seventh book in the trilogy. That's right. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, yeah. they joked about. A trilogy in five parts. Have you read the sixth one? By uh, Owen Colfer. Owen Colfer. Yeah, I did read that. I can't remember anything from it. Same. <laughs> I don't think he's a bad author. I just don't think he was right for that. I love Owen Colfer, but yeah, I... I don't think anyone other than Douglas Adams mm. should write The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And yeah, like maybe Terry Pratchett could have given it a go. Yeah. I but I, it, it didn't need another book. No, it absolutely didn't need not. another book. Absolutely. Douglas Adams would have said it didn't need another book after the third book. Yeah. I think he did say that. <laughs> there were already too many Hitchhiker's yeah. books. No no one needed to write a fifth a uh, sixth Hitchhiker's yeah. book. Yeah, I love those books very much. They're great. Yeah. 
Thank you, Cordis, who says this is what happens when no book for 12 years. But this was incredible. Moonboy Targaryen is S tier. Thank you. Thank you, Kai, who uh, curses great great granddad Long Waters. <laughs> yeah, I like dooming all of his descendants to having that bastard name. <laughs> yeah, well, is it a bastard name at this point? I guess not. It just sort of, you know, harkens back to their bastard origins. But, you know, that's a point of pride for them because they're Targaryen bastards. Yeah. I mean, all those old northern names, do you think stone and bowl and wood were true-born noble houses? Or were they, you know, I, I mean, you go back far they enough... They sound basically the same as snow. Exactly. Like, we all started as bastards before the institution of marriage was invented. Flowers really does sound like a Garth Greenhand sort of reach house name. Yeah. So, yeah. Garth planted many seeds. Mm. Do you, do you have thoughts on Garth Greenhead? Real. Real. Um, what thoughts am I supposed to have? Because I, I think that like there's a lot of... I think he's a great part of the mythology. I really enjoy that he's there in the mm. stories. I enjoy a bit of fecundity in my mythology. Yeah. I, I think that he was a tool of the old gods and the children of the forest. Oh, you... I know, but, but all the oldest legends say that he demanded sacrifice, and he's connected to nature, and he is said to be green with antlers, like a green man. Oh, yeah. So, I think he was an attempt by the children of the forest to control the first man, just like in and Seven Times Never Kill Man, and just like Blood Raven. Yeah. And I think that Bran's purpose is to be a bit like Garth Greenhand, in that he'll be like a interface between the children of the forest and the humans to try and strike some kind of balance, and to try and tilt things in the children of the forest's favour. But I think Bran's role will be to try and protect humanity as well. I think the Children of the Forest will die, but I think that it'll be necessary to maintain some kind of balance between the old gods and the humans. I don't think we're going to destroy all the weirwoods. I don't think we're going to burn down the nature gods. I think we're just going to try and make some kind of peace that the lasts. The super chat was about Renner for long Alright, alright. We should wrap this uh, up soon. Do you want to do a lightning round? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, glider sand, my... I believe daughter who's is eloping with one of your offspring says father and future father-in-law please RSVP to the wedding feast there'll be a great pie also beans and beets name suggestions for your grandkid oh a bean beet pie mm. I hope right. I hope there's beans and beets in the pie um gl gl glombopula is a good name glyph gl tugno Schwildus. Schorbert Gangostai. Belandra. <laughs> Belandra. <laughs> Thank you, Attila, who says, Hey, Schwarzkopfs and Golumbo, what do you think okay. about George's decision to make Daemon Targaryen take up his secret alter ego Lem Lemon Cloak? Well, Daemon must be very old if he's Lem Lemon Cloak, mustn't he? Yeah. About 130 years old or well, something? It's a gold cloak, and Damon was the commander of the gold cloak. Oh, you. <laughs> That's a pretty good point. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, right. Clifford Rose says, I'm 75% sure. That's very specific. That Sir <laughs> Gerald Dane, the White Bull... No, not Gerald. No, the Dark Star. That's Gerald Dane, the Dark Star. Yeah. Is the former boy king, Viserys III, fully grown up 17 years later. Yet another false identity from George Martin. That's a really good theory. I'm just wondering what happened to the other 160 years mm. in between. Well, it'd have to be a skin-changing vampire yeah, yeah. time traveler bolt-on situation. Cold hands, white, lemon white. He's yeah. a lemon white. He was weaned on snake venom. He's a snake wog white. <laughs> He's a dead snake. I stopped listening to you some time ago. Yeah, that's fair. Thank you for the super chat from Isofame, who says, Are there any names in Asswife that you just can't pronounce? So when you're reading, your brain just glosses over. E.g., I lived in... Prah... Prahren. Prahren? I've never pra heard of this place. Prey... Prehan. Prey Is this a kingdom of Middle-earth? Some exotic locale. 
Um, what names can I pronounce? I mean, I used to say Viserys instead of Viserys. That was that was not great. Um, a lot of people, it's not an issue of not being able to pronounce it. It's just an uh, interpretation issue with damn fair. Damn fair. I love yeah. that so much. Um, I've always been sort of uncertain about Brienne and Ariana, Ariane. Yeah, A- Ari Ariane. You, you know. <laughs> Ariane, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, well, I'm a big fan of my personal favourite character, Duncan Egg. Duncan Egg. First name Duncan, second name Egg. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I find the names pretty straightforward because it's just like American English. Yeah. Like, it, George doesn't get too fancy with it, really. I mean, when you first encounter the series and you're reading Daenerys Targaryen and Rhaegar yeah, Targaryen, true. that's quite a lot to pass. That's true. And, like, something has to click for you to be like, ah, oh, it's just... Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Rhaenyra Targaryen. Like, this is a pretty strange name. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, I guess it, it's pretty straightforward once you hear it said. But, I mean, we are speaking as people who... Are yeah, more this is our job. Those <laughs> names than any uh, sane person is. So yeah, I mean, there are lots of people who watch Hot D and, and are really then, confused like, about the names. We still disagree because, like, you say Rhaenyra, I usually say Rhaenyra. Yeah. Um, and the proper Valyrian pronunciation, I believe, would be Rhaenyra. And and yeah, I mean, George Martin, I think, says Lyanna instead of Lyanna. He says Dothraki. Yeah, which I find offensive. <laughs> If George Martin can't pronounce his own words yeah, right, then can we ha- be what to? chance do we have? Thanks, Joshua, who says HBO owns Really good the s- lightning round, by the way. Uh, right? Owns the Sesame Street characters, so the Muppets, Grover and Elmo, could be used. Have you seen those um, shorts that they did produce in like collaboration between Game of Thrones and Sesame Street? They're fucking brilliant. Bit weird that a show about murder and incest decided to do a crossover with Sesame Street. Well, Elmo visits the small council chamber to tell Tyrion and Cersei that, you know, they should be friends and that and that sharing things with one another is what being friends is all about. I don't know. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's got a point. <laughs> the whole sort of uh, corporate intellectual property multiverse cinematic universe phenomenon is not something I'm a huge fan See, of. See, I'm typically cynical of this sort of thing as well, but in that particular example, it's just so <laughs> cute and wholesome. It's absurd enough to be cute. Yeah. Thanks for the super chat from Simon, who says, Young Cersei is the younger, more beautiful queen that takes away all she holds dear, because she is the one who messes it all up by being paranoid. I mean, yeah. Sure. I I kind of love it, but it would be more appropriate if it was an older, more ugly queen that takes away all she holds mm. dear. Because yeah, it's, y- young Cersei was very promising and had a lot look to look forward to. It's the future self jeopardizing yeah. the self. Like she's actively t- making choices that are ruining her own life, yeah, it's... rather than things she's done in the past. I mean, I, I mean, I... yeah, children with her brother, pretty poor decision on her part. Bit of a uh oh. Um, yeah, well, you know, that's a good point. Yeah, I guess her past messes with her present as much. Yeah, well, I guess it is her past coming back to bite her because, like, her false accusations against Marjorie come back to bite her and her incest mm-hmm. comes back to bite her and her lies comes back to bite her. So, so yeah, I guess Cersei is the younger, more beautiful and queen who destroys herself. A lot of her story in A Face with Crows is about becoming less beautiful and yeah. showing signs of her aging beyond this beautiful princess she once was. According to her own superficial yeah. criteria. Like, that's the thing. Like, she is the most, like, judgy, narcissistic, shallow person. And so this whole notion of, like, her beauty being like this. And that's why I kind of enjoy the idea of Brienne being the, you know, beautiful other. Because it, there's no younger, more beautiful queen. It's another, comma, younger, more beautiful. Is it necessarily a queen? I don't know. I mean, I mean, Daenerys and Ariane and stuff make as much sense as yep. anyone, but... Lightning round. <laughs> Ethan Freeman says, What's something from season 6, 7, 8 of Game of Thrones you actually like, plus would like to see in The Winds of Winter slash A Dream of Spring? Also, do you think Bran will be king in the books? Love from Uck. Thanks, Uck. Um, I think that Bran will be king in the books. I think in some capacity, yeah. Because, I mean, that in interviews and stuff, the creators of the TV show said or at least heavily implied that they got that from George. Yeah. Um and at first when I saw Bran being king, I did not 
believe that that was going to happen in the books, but having thought about it more and like reading other people's analysis, you can see how it works. Yeah. And and that's why I was sort of saying before the idea of Bran being a sort of a interface between the old gods and the mm. humans and some kind of natural balance and ruling from the Isle of Faces instead of King's Landing. I like the idea of the Iron Throne being destroyed. I I think that there are ways that it thematically could work. It's just that there's there's groundwork and context that needs to be there to make it make sense that yep. the show did not do that the books could do. Yep. Something you like from the later seasons that you'd like to see in those books? I'm going to have to think. <laughs> um, if they could somehow find a way to put Ramin Jawadi's music in those books, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> who, who, uh, the, the actress who played Lady Crane. Let's put her in. Essie Davis. You are so good with the names of the actors. <laughs> My that one was a flex. The, yes. That one was a flex. I Incredible. did not need to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, what was good about... I mean... I mean Season six has Big to be. Cock. Season six has to be the best of those three, but I can't think of a lot of things Finger that I liked. The bum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. Thank you, Wisdom, who says, "Have we mentioned scary solar rays yet? Gamma ray bursts or something?" Glidus, I love all your stuff. Music analysis makes me smile sideways. Ah. Swifty, keep your bastards in line. <laughs> love these streams. Thank you, Menari. We haven't talked about gamma ray bursts, but we have talked about Paleolithic hand signal cave art communication linguistics. <laughs> and I hope that scratches the same itch. Mm. Nick says, speaking of ambiguity in art and not providing direct answers to profound questions, either of you watched The Leftovers? I've been saying I'm going to watch The Leftovers for years. I would love to watch The Leftovers because people keep saying I'd love it and it's by the creator of Lost, which I enjoyed the first two seasons of. Um, yeah, I'd like to check it out. I also haven't watched it. Thank you, Ruth and the Dark Magus, who says, Hi, Glimbit and Schwonk. Glad to catch a stream live. Question, what do you think of the idea of Garibald Grey being Harold Westerling incognito? Who the hell is Garibald Grey? <laughs> the hell is Garibald Grey? I, lo I love when people just start asking us about <laughs> other fantasy <laughs> stories and being like, well, they'll, they'll figure it out. Is this some mate of yours? or? Oh, Garibald. Gary. Oh, we go way back. Garibald Grey. Yeah, I, uh, I, don't, I don't know about Garibald Grey. Isn't Gaston Grey the, the prison off dawn? Is Garibald Grey He's from Gaston? He's a knight. In, in the Dance of the Dragons. No. Garibald Grey. Is he? Yeah. What did he do? He led a group of rivermen in the... Um, this is directly from the wiki, just so no one accuses me of doing the thing I'm doing. Um, he, read a, he led a group of rivermen in the Battle of the Lakeshore. He refused the challenge of Sir Kristen Cole before the Butcher's Bowl began, and Kristen... Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Ah. During the First Battle of Tumbleton, he commanded 6,000... But Holy shit, it was a pretty important commander. I need to reread Fire and Blood. Fire is House Grey a house? I don't think so. I've never heard of and House right, Grey. You're right, Gaston Grey is an island in the Sea of Dawn, right? Yeah. Maybe Garibald Grey is Dornish. No, it says here it's in House of the Riverlands. I think it was a riverman. Is this according to George or is this according to This is to according Elio to a wiki of Ice and Fire. Well, wikis are never wrong. But the only reference on the page is uh, Fire and Blood itself. Uh, so Very helpful. Very helpful when a citation refers to a 100,000 word volume. It referred volume. to a specific chapter in the book. Okay. <laughs> all right. Don't um, you get all, all, all pants tied because of this? Oh, forgive, forgive my you your crusade against the publicization of knowledge. The, the, uh, um... I, I love the publication knowledge, just with very specific citations that are more easily verifiable. It's difficult because there are so many different publications of the books. Like, you can't just say it's on page 15 when there are 1,200 different editions. Well, I'm starting to sound like my um, uptight cousin, Not Shift X, but, like, it, having a... Oh, like a quote there. We, we yeah, now live yes. in a world with copy and paste. Yes. If you're going to bother to do a citation, why not copy a sentence so that you can actually just find the exact um, spot? Outdated style guides. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, style guides were designed for a different century. Like the whole like APA citations God, and I like hated Harvard that. That's and like the worst all the... part about university. It, it it's so 
unhelpful. Like, citations should be more about, here's a URL to the exact publication where yeah. this is from, and here's the line that it's from. Because, like, why like, waste everyone's... We're living in the modern world, aren't we? Yeah, well... Every, everyone reading my dissertation has access to the internet, and you're reading this on Adobe Acrobat. Like, you can just click it. Academia is so ass backwards and <laughs> eating itself, and it's a nightmare for us all. Dragons... I don't think Garibald Grey is Harold Westerly. Uh, I, well... I mean, it could happen. Well, well I mean, Harold Westerly, like, died a... Well, well, this is sort of spoilers for Hot Day Season 2. Mild spoilers for Hot Day Season 2. Uh-oh. But Harold Westerly just, like, dies of old age, right? In And the then book. gets replaced, yeah. Yeah, well, that happened long, long before Viserys died. Yeah. He dies in, like, 115 or something, 114. I'm really going to have to, like, shift or shift into um, Hot D mode when Hot D Season 2 comes around again. Hey, I'm going to have to remind myself. So, Alt Shift X is the Wikipedia shortcut to go to a random article. Oh, is it? What does Alt Swift X do on Wikipedia? That opens a portal to a dark <laughs> realm from which none escape. Um, you, you ever seen Hellraiser? <laughs> It opens the paradox you guys machine. Know Dead and... Zone from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> this this guy um, just keyboard shortcutted him, himself into the Shadow Realm. I think that in the book, Harold Westling did die when he died. I think in the show, they might reuse Harold Westling as um, that that old bloke in King's Landing, um, the Shepherd. It would be weird if Harold faked his own death in a time of peace. Yes. I mean, it would be weird if he faked his own death at any time, but particularly... Well, I don't think he will have faked his death in the show. I think he's just going to pop up again. Yeah. He's walked away and then... Well, 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 is Harold dead in Hot D? No. I I think, yeah. because Right. Because in the books, he he dies... He just walks away in episode nine. It's very strange. Yeah, right. But but might, yeah, he has a different story in the books and the Absolutely. show. Absolutely, is yeah. Okay, that's he's what still, I'm trying to get. He's dead around. by the time Viserys is dead. You, you keep saying this, he's dead, but I just want him to be alive because <laughs> he's so nice. Sure. Lightning round. Lightning round. Wolf says skin changes slash wargs said that John is a powerful warg. Could his Valyrian fused first men blood allow him to walk slash skin change into a dragon he's bonded with? Oh, I see. Yes, Wolf, yes, yes. I'm so glad you asked. I am becoming increasingly convinced that the Valyrian connection to dragons is basically a kind thing. of skin changing magic. It's a telepathic um, connection with a mythical animal. Like, even just on text, it's the same thing. And there's all this stuff about, like, who. Uh, about. Who taught the Valyrians to control dragons in the world of Ice and Fire? And there's a little sidebar that says that some ancient, unknown, nameless people, it said, taught the Valyrians to control dragons. It's also said that some ancient dragon lords that preceded the Valyrians came to the Old Town area and built a Blackstone fortress with dragons. And they may have been trying to get the secrets of the Children of the Forest and of the Green Seers. That's what the World of Ice and Fire book says in the Old Town chapter. And so if you sort of put one and two and three together, you start to think, hang on. Six. The Children of the Forest, you are so good at math today. <laughs> He's killing it. He's attracted two from two ten from the ten other earlier. day. Yeah. Quick math. Um, and so if you sort of put a few little hints together, you start to think, hang on. Did ancient dragon lords learn dragon controlling magic from the children of the forest and from the old gods and if you listen to like folks like i think david lightbringer might have floated these kinds of ideas it might be that azora high was an ancient uh person from the great empire of the dawn who uh basically stole magic from nissa nissa and from the old gods and from the weirwoods and he stole that like skin changing magic i think by marrying a child of the forest or assaulting a child of the forest interbreeding with the child of the forest and that's like the original sin of a song of ice and fire and that is how humans attained skin changing blood which is how valyrians attained dragon riding magic and how first men attained attained skin changing yep yep i think it makes a lot of sense i think there being a single genetic origin for this ability also makes sense well, well, yeah, I mean, there wasn't just one person interbreeding with Children of the Forest, because there are multiple... Well, I mean, like, in the sense that we talk about genetic events in the real world, it's not just, like, one person fucked another person and that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, but the, but the idea that the Great Empire of the Dawn, like, attained this power from from the Children of the Forest in Westeros, um, and, that, uh, and that crime sort of triggered 
the Long Night, possibly, because the Bloods of an Emperor triggered the Long Night. Like, there's all this stuff, like the Grey King and um, even the Winged Knight and, like, all these different mythic figures in A Song of Ice and Fire all sort of follow the same pattern of, like, marrying a magical woman, sacrificing a woman, getting power, and causing the apocalypse. There's, like, six or seven or eight different figures who do this same thing. So it's like, all right, George is trying to tell us something here. And, you know, the idea of Lightbringer... The, the fiery sword Lightbringer is dragons. Um, Daenerys' dragons are described as a fiery sword across the world. and So, you know, we're in a lightning round, but I think that there could be something in this stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. John could probably bond with a dragon. Why not? <laughs> no, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I guess an interesting question is, like, could a first man Stark northerner... Arya... Like Arya, control a dragon through through powerful skin changing magic. Given enough exposure to the animal, yeah. Like maybe you don't really need to be a Targaryen or even a Valyrian to control dragons if you just sort of believe in yourself. If Arya can control a cat, what is a dragon if not a big scaly cat? That's what Rhaenys thought. Why why are dragons the unique animal to control? Is it because they are just like bigger and stronger and have a greater willpower and? I, I I like the idea that you know around Hot D people are sort of saying that maybe like Vega has the souls of his, the Senya, her former writers Rhaegor, inside yeah. of her. The idea of dragons being a kind of hive mind is interesting. A store of dead souls is interesting. But Why what don't I is... say Magor? Magor didn't write Vega. Um, yes. Yes. And and that like influences Aemond. Yeah. Yeah, and w- which is cool because it connects to like the the interpersonal psychological theme of the story, which is about the sins of our fathers dancing on the strings of the ones who came before. Like we follow in our father's footsteps and they followed in our grandfather's footsteps. That's what Tyrion and Tywin and Tytos are all about. And the idea that there's sort of a magical um, version of that, there's, there's a magical aspect to that personal aspect, which is that, you know, the past comes back to haunt us you know psychologically and supernaturally the old gods is the past haunting us the dragons are the past haunting us the mistakes of the fathers I, yeah I, that, that is all at the heart of a song of ice and fire i think i thought it was all cocks in the end cocks and dragons in it titus andronicus um spencer crow says any thoughts on reading sanderson at some point he has me hooked with the cosmere and he writes like it's going out of style life before death lads any Sando in your life? No Sando in my life, sadly. Yep. All, all of my brothers are like quite into Brando Sando. Mm. Um, I've listened to him speak. He sounds He's a very intelligent and thoughtful guy. Um, he has his podcast that he hosts so that he has something to do while he signs books, <laughs> <laughs> which is just brilliant. Um, and I, I think I will read him at some point, but I haven't gotten out to it yet. Yeah. It's cool that he has a YouTube channel. Yeah, and he's quite active. It's not just like this weird this thing he tends to every year. It's something he set up as like a sure maybe sometime when I'm retired and bored. He just he actively uses it. Like how George Martin like has a Patreon. What? Yeah, he doesn't post on it. What are the perks? The perks are like you get like a video from the archives of <laughs> beastly books at a discount to the Jean Cocteau Theatre. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you want to contribute to George Sign Martin's uh, fund? I mean, I mean, you know, I I think it's more about supporting yeah. the people who work at these side businesses. But it's it's kind of weird that it exists. Anyway, thank you, Mister Conspired, who says you two are always a joy to listen to. Thank you. Thank you. Elliot says, "Alt Shift X. <laughs> when is the real Gladys video?" I You'd mean, have I, to ask him. Yeah, I'm not Alt Shift X. I'm Alt Swift X. It would. I mean, I might. It would be, it would be quite funny to. Um, do a video about Glidus because Glidus has done Glidus has done a video about <laughs> Alt Shift X. Maybe if Alt Shift X did a video about Alt Swift X and then Alt Swift X did a video about Glidus, I'm lost. Yeah, it gets very confusing. That video very was about quickly. Preston Jacobs, not Alt Shift X. Yeah, well, there, yeah, there have been a couple of other YouTubers who have done Alt Shift X videos. Yeah, that Fantasy Haven video who really got into the details about how Alt Shift X came to be. Well, if Preston made a video about Alt shift decks and then and then all right it's gonna get confusing i'm already lost thanks for the super chat from shira malka cohen who says i'm not really an asswife fan but love listening to the two of you chat about it now i know more about horses and secret targaryens than i ever expected to ha ha 
Thanks and have a cup of tea on me. Will do. How are we going to have a cup of tea on Shira? You're going to have to pop on by. Sounds uncomfortable. <laughs> For at least one of the parties involved. Mm. It is interesting that we have got, we've got people listening in who are not privy to the um, source material. It's wild, but I kind of get it. Like, I, you know... I, I watch YouTube shit of yeah. stuff I haven't interacted with either, yeah. I've listened to, like, Warhammer 40k podcasts, <laughs> and I've never read a Warhammer 40k book. Yeah. So, I think I get it. Yeah. Sadoobs says, What do you think the chances are we never see Darkstar or side characters like that again? Feels like it'd be hard to include them all. That's a great question. I think the purpose of Darkstar is to steal Dawn and then be killed by Balon Swan and then Dawn will end up in Jon Snow's hands. Possibly as a result of uh, Euron, who's in Old Town, which is near High Hermitage really and playing Starfall. hot potato with this sword, aren't we? It, it, it is a little wild, yeah. But... What do you think is going to happen to Jon's current magical sword? Yeah, that's a good question. Dual wield? Oh, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't validate that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, some people are like, oh, Longclaw will turn into Lightbringer, which I guess is fine. But I, th- I think Dawn is just so obviously like an ancient artifact from... Oh, yeah. You know. That I'm going to agree with. A, a, and it's associated with that ancient mythic stuff. And it, it'd be weird if Dawn wasn't Lightbringer, is all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. Next, Tyrion kills Illyrio. Who says, hi, Schwyman and Globfunkel. I love that. Fantastic. Always loved how much you know about reference obscure thousands British comedy like Bruiser and Mitchell Have Webb. Have you watched Bruiser? I don't know what Bruiser is. That's so funny. But thanks for <laughs> the compliment on how much I know about it. <laughs> is it popular in Oz? Should Olivia Coleman have played Barbary Dustin? The answer to both is yes. Well, I don't know about that. I think Olivia Coleman should play everyone because she's wonderful. Yeah. But I, I, she doesn't strike me as a Barbary Dustin type, honestly. Um, I don't know. Probably not as popular as those shows are in UK. Um, Mitchell and Webb is known. Bruiser is quite obscure. Mm. I get the impression that Americans only watch American stuff, so they're surprised when other countries watch each other's stuff you know yeah like i think every country except america watches lots of different country well, stuff well, a lot of the time it's sort of intrinsic that other people in the world are going to consume a lot of american media just because there's a lot of it yes it it composes a lot of the media so we're probably just more used to going abroad for our <laughs> media consumption yeah i don't know yeah well Brits make good comedy, and so do Americans. They're a little funny. Just, which, just like watch more different stuff. Yeah. Just, just like watch something. Turns out, funny people live everywhere. Uh, right? And sometimes they've got different funnies that you haven't seen Fucking before. Mad. Thanks for the super chat from Mark van der Klos Horst, who says Danny's trajectory equals the Bloodstone Emperor. She'll destroy King's Landing. The Long Night will fall. Then Azora High. She'll save the world, and nobody knows her ending except the readers. Hmm. <clears throat> I, I think that Danny is more the Amethyst Empress. She's got Amethyst eyes. I, I, I think that there's some theorists who theorize that Euron wants to marry Daenerys as an imitation of the Bloodstone Emperor killing the Amethyst Empress. Um, he wants to sacrifice Daenerys to get a dragon power and cause the Long Night. I don't think Euron will succeed in killing Daenerys, but he might have a red hot go. Do you think Euron will have a red hot go? Well, that's all he's ever done. <laughs> that's true. That's his best quality. His, his whole life is giving it a shot. If you can say one he nice thing... He backs himself in. That's what you can say about Euron. He backs himself. <laughs> he takes a... He swings for the fences, that guy. He's never not believed in Euron. <laughs> Euron is what happens if you believe all of those motivational posts yeah. and, you know... Oh, he's the Sigma male for sure. He sure is. He's on that grind He's set. an alpha wolf. <laughs> he sure is. Thank you, Danny Goblin, who says, Hey, Swifty, I've seen that the hated Alt-Shift-X... The failing Alt-Shift-X... ...has top billing in the YouTube section of the A Song of Ice and Fire fandom Wikipedia page. The what? Yeah, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> this I, Damn. Uh, mm. uh, hmm. Was I supposed to be keeping tabs on this? I'd, I'd look at it every night. Damn. Gotta check the rankings. 
The stonks. The power rankings. Number go up. <laughs> who, who who do you think has the highest power ranking of of the Song of Ice and Fire fandom oh. Wikipedia page? I've al- I've always apparently thought, it's old shift X. I've always thought that Joe Magician is a is a contender. You know, he might be the most powerful. Might just be. I you know I think that I think that Carmine you know Red Team Review you know powerful powerful contender yeah powerful guys if if you put every song of ice and fire <laughs> youtuber into a cage match who do you think would win oh. do you think do you think that uh brendan beefish with his military training that would, would, would certainly come out assist top? him mm. but preston jacobs is just an enigma mm. wrapped and, and in a paradox wrapped in a guy Mm. And he's he's very tall. It'd be very difficult to anticipate and, his moves. Yeah, and and he's old, so no one would want to hurt him. <laughs> you might be right. And you never know what's going on up there, you know. <laughs> I, I look. I think it'd be entertaining. That's that's all I have to say. Thank you for the super chat from Elliot, who says, "How do you think the TV audience would have reacted to the real dark book Tyrion?" It would have been painful for a lot of people people who were attached to charismatic little Peter Dinklage. I didn't mean little like that. I mean just like, you know, he's a friendly guy. Um, so that would have been tough for them. He could have done it for sure. Peter mm. Dinklage is not a bad actor. Mm. Um, but it, I think it overall would have been good. Like, people are going to react negatively to their favourite character turning out to be an evil dickhead no matter what you do. Yeah. You just bite the bullet and do it and it'll be better art as a result. <laughs> yeah, I I think he could have done it. I think Peter Dinklage is one of the few who could have done it. Peter Dinklage played Richard the Third in yeah. like, the Shakespeare Richard the Third, which is basically the character that yeah. partly inspired Dark Tyrion and um the idea of like so he has played that character already, kind of. And I think that yeah, a lot of people would have hated to see Peter Dinklage wanting to murder and sexually assault his own family and and hurting like innocent slaves and doing all the horrible things that Tyrion does in book 5 but that George wrote it cuz it's it's powerful mm. um and it it is what is going to make the ending make sense in in certain ways like it's not going to be Daenerys who just decides it, all herself that she wants to murder a whole city full of civilians that there's going to be other people in that equation and i think Tyrion is is part of that so uh, yeah look i can understand why they didn't want to do it but i kind of wish they did yep thanks for the super chat from ham sandwich who says just wanted to give you both five dollars well see the thing is you've only given one of us five dollars <laughs> you're gonna have to jump over to my stream. do you think we could buy a ham sandwich with that five dollars or has inflation gone too far oh i think it's just gone too mental now he's spending a whole six dollars fifty for a ham sandwich so we could get like a third of a ham sandwich each bloody hell this math just ain't adding up <laughs> thank you mukafu who says is torgarian bar emin the ancestor to house targaryen bar emin is one of the few houses sworn to dragonstone like valerion and keltogar I, are people, like, deliberately picking the most obscure characters in A Song of Ice and Fire <laughs> to ask us questions about them? I was reading the wiki last night, and I stumbled across this article. What do you think hmm, of it? <laughs> here's something to ask old Shrift X and Gliders. Yeah, I don't remember Tor... 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 Hold, hold on. Torgarion? Is, he, is there really a character called Torgarion? Torgarion. Is that real? Because that does sound a lot like Targaryen, doesn't it? I ain't seen no tall Gary. <laughs> okay. So it's gotten to the point where people are literally making up characters <laughs> to ask us questions about. I mean, I, I mean, it's the sort of shit that George would pull, though, honestly. Like, George George would. He's a bit of a troll. Put some secret ancestor. But, I mean, I feel like the secret ancestor would still be in Valyria, not in... Not in the crown. Did lines. I misspell it? There is a... There is a tall Gar... Torgarian Bar Emin. Torgarian Bar Emin? What did Torgarian Bar Emin do? An Andal king of. An Andal? He, he married a, a, a Massey princess. So this is before the Targaryens. This yeah. Is... Yeah, so I. That's just George fucking with us, right? That's extremely weird. I mean, maybe he's. Hmm. 
because there was like no contact between Westeros at that time and Valyria. I mean, there were those mysterious ancient dragon riders. I who said built the at first that fort. time. This is much, much, much later because this is an Andal king. Yeah, and it's a first name, which is like yeah. There's some sort of like cultural memory of the Targaryens in Andal Westeros two thousand years before the Targaryens arrived. I obviously there's evidence of time travel. I don't know what else to tell you. Targaryen Bar Emmon is Magor. Magor's quite old then, isn't he? Yeah. Is Targaryen a horse? <sighs> <laughs> Thanks for the super chat from Maria, who says, whoop, whoop, gloop, and swoop. Thank you very much. Thank you, Simcoe, who says, it's everyone's favorite duo, Swiftmon and Glarfunkel. I like the other one better. Sorry, Simcoe. Thank you, Ethan, who says, Glibby, what about making the Winds of Winter pie with Frey season? Again, I th- I've thought about this more than you. <laughs> I don't need suggestions. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat from Simcoe, who says, I would like to state that I did not read Tyrion Kills the Lyrian's <laughs> comment. That's fucking brilliant. And I came up with my pun independently. Yeah, but, well, theirs was better, so sorry. Look, I am never going to question someone for being petty about pun authorship. Oh, no, not at all. Like, I'm, you're fully entitled I to... I cannot throw stones in that particular glass house. Not even Hello Rocks. Thank you, Gary the Beaver, who says, Did you ever look into my theory that Brienne is a malformed Targaryen bastard? Seriously, though, there are dragon links to Tarth. Thanks, Glimmertwift. Glimmaltwift? Glimmaltwift. I I think any Westerosi noble family could have a bit of Targaryen blood from just someone having sex with someone, some bastard, centuries past. It's all possible. I just don't see any... Uh, resonant narrative or thematic reason for Brienne to have Targaryen blood. I also just don't love the assumption that like anyone with a birth defect or anyone yeah. who just looks <laughs> so abnormal like... on any level must be part dragon. It's like, eh. I mean, maybe, but maybe people are just different sometimes. Is she really like malformed? Is it, she's just like a pretty ugly person, right? Yeah, and just very big. Yeah. Some people are like that. I mean, she's, like, pretty extreme, I guess. Like, in terms of her strength and her height. It's, like... Dis- yeah, but, like, what other Targaryen bastard? Like, I mean, you could point at Maegor, but that's it. Well, yeah, that's true. Like, yeah, why does having Targaryen blood make Maylis her super big and super strong? Yeah. But that's it. Did, did, have you heard the theory that Brian ate her twin in... I have heard that in one. In utero? I, it, it's it's so weird how, how people bring in the, like, genetic uh, utero stuff. But, like, in fairness, like, the Tyrion situation is weird and there is all that stuff about Targaryen stillborn dragons with tails. And so, you know, George started it, you know? <laughs> I, I mean, the thing that, that keeps, like, that keeps me up at night is just how many references there are in Song of Ice and Fire to interspecies breeding, yeah. producing What's hybrids. What's going on there, George? Like, what, yeah, what exactly... What, what are you getting at there, is, mate? What, what, why is this a uh, thought that you need to put uh, in my you brain? You need to write an eighth book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah I'm not a huge fan of all of that, but... It is strange that we have to think about that. Have you read Meat House Man? Uh, no, I haven't read Meat House Man. Hmm. I, I know, though. <laughs> mm. Whenever anyone says a Song of Ice and Fire theory that seems too weird or, or too gross or too depraved, just, like, read Meat House Man and you will start to understand how dark and twisted and gross George Imagination Night can get. Nightflyers as well. Yeah, I haven't read Nightflyers. Have you read Nightflyers? Yeah. yeah. They've done a, mo- a movie and a TV show. I haven't watched either of them. Why have we not d- watched the TV show and the movie oh, of the George Martin show? We're busy playing Pictionary. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, yeah. No, we we should do that. There's also that. Um, there's also a Night of the Cooters. There's also there is a <laughs> Wild Card Magnum Opus. There's also Sand Kings. Yep. Is a sci-fi story George wrote, which was made into a. Was it a Twilight Zone or was it a? Oh really? Yeah, I, I don't think it was Twilight Zone. It was one of those similar shows to Twilight Zone, right. Amazing Stories or the something. Scary Door. Scary Door. Yeah, there was a Scary Door episode <laughs> that adapted one of George Martin's stories, Sand Kings, and right. of course, there's the Twilight Zone episodes that he wrote. Like, I, I feel like it'd be really and fun to Beauty and the Beast, that entire show. We but really should talk Beauty about and that. the Beast reviews. That would be funny. 
Yeah, no, that'd be cool. Uh, thank you for the super chat from Rachel K, who says, I'm watching with someone who thinks Swifty and Alt Shift X are the same person. If I pay you, will you explain how wrong they are? Uh, look, I've been trying. I've sent cease and desists to Alt Shift X. He's trying to take my voice, rip my style, and I am just outraged by all of it. Um, because I, I was first. I started it, you know. I, I am the senior and the elder, and I am just so mad that Alt Shift X tries to be me, you know, trying so hard to be as cool as me and just failing. So, you know, I know that imitation is the highest form of flattery, so I guess I should just be flattered. And he should be flat end. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, let's flat. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Wisdom, who says we were robbed of Dark Dink. <laughs> True. What, what Dark Tyrion, Dark Dinklage. Oh, Dark Dink! Glidus the Night King or Light of the Seven? Which uses the piano better? Light of the Seven. Yeah, Light of the Seven is like season six, episode ten, when he goes... Is that it? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah. I'm, I, will, I will do that at some point. I will drop my thoughts on that song. Thought drop. At some point. Thought drop. What, what's the Night King one? Da, 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 da. Oh yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's very dramatic. I think it's I think it's good. It's good. I think Light of the Seven's better. It just it just it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth from how bad <laughs> the Night King ending was, you know? I've listened to all these streams, but never caught you live before. You all reignited my interest in writing and analysis, which I now study. Cheers. Fantastic. Thank you, Varavi. Yeah, there's a in Terrabang. Oh, um, cool. Nice to study writing and analysis. I wonder if that's literature writing and analysis or if that's another kind of writing or analysis. Might be writing copy for a cornflakes brand. Analyzing cornflake copy. Writing about the analysis of cornflake copy. Yeah. No, you'd, you'd be surprised. Good work if you can get it. Yeah, look, there's not many people who get the privilege of a... Uh, of that occupation, but uh, my goodness, all the cornflakes you can study. Is that a Dr. Seuss title? Oh, the cornflakes! You oh, can the study. cornflakes you'll <laughs> examine. Uh, Thank you for the super chat from Melanie Cox, who says you two have great chemistry. It's always a pleasure to tune in. No clue what you're talking about. <laughs> That's brilliant. Fantastic. I, it's it's funny. Like sometimes I worry that I'm not being clear about what I'm talking about, and I try to be more. <laughs> Uh, easy to understand but then other times I'm like I think people like it if we make less sense I also feel that and I I've basically given up maybe we should start just making up characters and just you know what do you, we already have a multiverse yeah. in these streams yeah. it's really interesting when we get comments in Super Chat saying that we have great chemistry because like do you know what we're doing I, we're just talking about dragons yeah. my dude yeah my dude yeah that's just my stoil. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Thank the you, stoil. Elliot Gilmore, who says, why do you think they didn't do Evil Tyrion? I think they didn't do Evil Tyrion because if they did, they would have had lots of think pieces and criticism and people saying, hey, it's really messed up that you're depicting this kind of violence against women and sexual assault and all those things, and they just didn't want to... They didn't want to do that. Do you really think that's the prime motivator for not doing it? I also think because I also think that writing is hard and they were bad at it. <laughs> there we go. I think it's those two things. Yeah, I, well, evil Tyrion, dark Tyrion, dark Dink. Dark Dink. Is a um very complicated character. And it takes a lot of time and effort and consideration and thoughtfulness to write a complicated character. And isn't it easier and they to just willing say to... he's nice? And and just have him say dick jokes for the rest of the show. Just make him nice and put all the blame on the scary dragon lady. Just blame the scary dragon lady and the dink can be a good dink. I really do think it's just like they weren't willing to do, do it. They just couldn't be fucked. Yeah. No, I, I think there's no underestimating their ability to shrug. Uh, thank you, Sharp, who says, here, have one third of that ham sandwich. Oh, that'll get me through the night. That's a relief. Thank you, Sharp. Gladys, do you think we should wrap up this stream? Oh, I, we should have wrapped this up an hour ago. I am retired. That is such a deep cut, though, isn't it? It is a bit. I am retired. I really enjoyed playing Pictionary. That was great fun. That was great fun. We Ma- should do whatever the fuck more often. 
Yeah, no, I, I'm all for <laughs> random variety hour streams. If anyone has ideas, like chuck it in the comments, chuck it in the live chat. If you've got some suggestion for some for some silly activity that may or may not be a Song of Ice and Fire themed. I don't know if I told you, someone sent mm. me a Google Drive with screenshots of all the different costumes so that we can do a costume <laughs> ranking stream in the future. Oh my god, I, I saw a comment that was like, I'm not sure the boys are equipped to do a sartorial <laughs> critique. <laughs> Not sure they are quite qualified. <laughs> so I would love to prove them all wrong. Yeah, no, we know exactly what we're talking about 100% of the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that'd be fun. Yeah, clothes ranking. That'd be great. Fashion stream. I'd love it. We'll have a dress up party for it. Fancy it dress Halloween. live stream. Yes! I mean, we could do a spooky, a spooky stream. Spooky stream. Spooky. Ooky. <laughs> Yeah, I think we'd better wrap Thanks, it up. Thanks, Tribune Aquila, for telling us to go away. <laughs> All right, if you say so, <laughs> Tribune Aquila. We've outstowed our welcome, clearly. Thank you so much for participating, everyone. Yeah, this, it was great was fun. fun. Thank you so much for all the generous Super Chats as well. We appreciate it. And uh, please like and subscribe. And subscribe to Glidus' channel. There's a link in the description. And follow Glidus' rock band. There's a link in the description. And follow Glidus' side channel, which has oh some my God, Glimbus. songs that he's been making. Glidus makes songs. Isn't that cool? Who knew? Musician. That was one of the songs. <laughs> that was one of the songs. Um, so yeah, thanks guys. And thanks Elliot, who says, what do you think the writer's point of Daenerys burning down the city in the show is? Um, well, that's a lightning round question. Um, <laughs> that's... <laughs> I'm sorry for the sass. Um, but I think that uh, King's Landing needs to burn because it is everything corrupt and everything wrong with the political system and um, there needs to be some kind of atrocity. And I don't know, John Con and the Bells and... I, I, I think they've got to burn it all down to build something new and better. And I think that Tyrion will be partly culpable in the death of many. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it plays out. Guys, we're going to wrap it up. Do you want to wrap it up? Yeah. Any any shout outs we should do? Um, any dots we should T or crosses we should I? Christina Applegate. Absolutely Christina Applegate. Every time. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> Till next time. Bye. <laughs>